Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I thought I had it all set up. I guess I didn't. Hope everyone out there is having themselves a good night. Welcome to uh, to Boulder Talk Radio. I even forgot to do the little the little introduction thing, but that's all right. That's okay. Uh, what is this? Tuesday. I did not realize, to be honest with you, I did not realize that today was Super Tuesday. I just, I just didn't realize it. You know, usually this is kind of a big deal, right? Super Tuesday is a big deal, supposed to be. It's really meant to kind of like set the stage for what's going to happen for the rest of the year. But with both Biden and Trump relatively running unopposed uh, on the presidential front, it, not much really going on. You know what I mean? Uh, California had a bit, I don't know, an upset or a win. Uh, Adam Schiff is looking to uh, be progressing to the uh uh to to the ballot for senator of California filling in the uh the the seat of the late Diane Feinstein and uh Katie Porter apparently now uh out of politics for the time being she'll she'll definitely go back she'll she'll run again in 2 years is what it is there anyway i uh, let me see here let me take take a quick look at the chat obviously Brandon is Talking about uh, Kung Fu Panda. This is always talking about Kung Fu Panda. Brandon. <laughs> I'm ex- I hope you're happy. I hope you're happy. Uh, let's see. Uh, Echovin here says, I'm going to give you uh, a dislike for your metrics. Uh, why don't you thank me? Yeah, I don't care. I mean, clearly you're doing it for attention. I guess, like, I guess that's what I'm going to give you, uh, is attention. That's, that's really what you want. Uh, H Bart's asking, can you draw by hand? No, no, I cannot draw by hand. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I use AI to make my, to make my thumbnails. Although tonight's thumbnail, I, uh, I absolutely stole from, uh, from, from somewhere on fortune. All right. Anyway. It was such an ingrate. Ah, eh, whatever. Anyway, what are my thoughts on uh, Warner Brothers dubbing down, or dubbing, dumbing down, or dubbing, doubling down on live service games? 
I think to, to truly have that conversation, we have to actually kind of like take a step back for a second and look at the overall idea of what a live service game is and what it can do. I'm not saying that I'm a fan. I'm just trying to be the most objective that I could be in this moment in time. But really what we have to talk about is the fact that live service games are a thing. They're not going away, right? We have to remember that. We have to remember that, that live service games are are here to stay because these, again, like movies, these, these developers, these publishers, I don't even want to say developers as publishers are in the business of making money. So when you have games that are starting to see skyrocketing costs of like $300 million, you have to figure out a way for them to be consistent money makers in order to warrant that investment. So by Warner Brothers games, like saying, hey, we're going to start doubling down on live service content, free to play content, mobile games, things like that. That doesn't mean that they're going to stop single player games. Now, the reason why people are thinking that is because of the conversation, the comments that the that the one guy made, I think it's like the head of the department, the head of that division um, had made in regards to like a live service Harry Potter world. You know, looking at the success of Harry of, of Hogwarts Legacy, selling what twelve million copies in twenty twenty three, highest selling game of the year, the game that almost kicked off GamerGate two point like quite literally almost kicked it off. You've got like they're looking at that as like how can we turn this into a constant money maker? Because the thing with Hogwarts Legacy is there was like no DLC as far as I understand it. I, I could be wrong. But there is no updates post the game coming out. Not that there needs to be. It's a singular, solid experience. Like, let it be that. However, you know, gamers want more bang for their buck down the road. They want there to be, like, like ongoing things that are going to keep them coming back for more. And that's where the DLC and that's where these live service aspects come from. If a game is, like, if a game is cheaper and offers up some of that stuff, I think people will be more open to it. But at the end of the day, we've seen that with uh, a fair amount of those games, like they'll do okay. There are some high profile ones that won't, but also we have to look at like what happens in regards to like the foreign market because the foreign market has a shit ton of live service games and they make a lot more fucking money. Like, look, North American gamers, North American gamers. Okay. Like pale in comparison to how many gamers there are in China. 1.6 billion people, last I checked, and it's probably more now, over 400 million people played games every single month in China. That is more than the amount of people in Canada and the United States combined play video games in China, right? And they're not fucking Western games. They're not fucking Western games. They're not even Japanese games. Like they got their whole fucking marketplace over there. So all these devs, they want to get in on this money. These publishers want to get on this money. EA pushes out fucking the same goddamn Madden, the same goddamn FIFA every fucking year with barely any changes outside of a couple cosmetics and maybe a feature or two. And the reason why they're able to do that is because you've got whales. They don't give a shit. We have to remember here that if you don't purchase DLC, you don't purchase any of the in-game currency, you don't buy any of that shit, you don't matter to them. You, they, don't, they won't cater to you. And they won't cater to you because they don't fucking have to. You know what I mean? Like, they don't have to cater to you, right? You might spend your money, you might wait for a sale, you might not. But the people who invest hundreds of dollars into a game, look at, look at, look at like DSP, for example, and, and all, those, uh, all that money he spent on that mobile WWE game, right? Like, I don't know the specifics of it. But that's the guy that these companies are going after. That's the guy. That's why they keep doing it because there are fucking money makers that they are money makers that have whales attached to them. There's a reason why. Now, what sucks, and I don't think they should ever, 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 ever do is hide anything behind a paywall. Let it be grindable. Let it be grindable. Let it be acquired in game. People who want to buy it early can buy it early. I don't have an issue with that as long as I can get my hands on it. I don't like it 
I really don't like it when I can't get it and it's behind a paywall and I'm like, I'm just not going to fucking do it. In all my years of gaming, and believe me, I've been around for a while. The only time I've ever spent money on a weapons pack ever, fucking ever, was The Last of Us remastered on the PS4 because the factions mode had some weaponry for five bucks. It was like a couple items and shit. And I was like, all right, fine, I'll do that. And I couldn't grind out those weapons. So I bought it under duress, in my opinion. And it was only five bucks, but I bought nothing else. I didn't buy any of the other microtransactions that they put into these fucking games. I don't like microtransactions. I never spend money on them. I'll just go without or I'll grind it. What, one of the things I said in, in response to somebody on Twitter today was I, I, they were just talking about this. And then I said, Helldivers 2. Like, that's it. That's the tweet. I would spend money with Helldivers 2 if they were like, hey, we need to expand out. You know, we need to like, you know, we have a battle pass like a, or, or a, a season one DLC coming or some shit like that. And it was like marginal. It was like, you know, it was like it was like moderately priced or whatever. Yeah, I'd probably do it because the game is so goddamn fun. And you can tell there's a lot of love that went into making that goddamn game in many ways. Otherwise, I just don't fucking do it. And you know what I do now and what I tell everyone to do now is just wait a month and a half. The games go on sale. It's the same thing with fucking movies like they get people to go buy them right away. If you wait a little bit, like once the initial fucking rush dies down, usually they'll restock it and they might drop it down to an affordable price. And you can just wait for sales. And that's what I do. I wait for sales. It's like the thrill of the hunt, so to speak. So I wait for games to drop in price. And in the meantime, I'll play my back catalog. You know what I mean? Like that's the, the plus the older I get, that's like what I have time for. You know, I should be getting the Raj ally uh, from Ash Eternal here very quickly. And probably the first game I'm going to play on it. And this, <laughs> the first game I'm going to probably play on that motherfucker is going to be Hatred. Cause I, cause it's, it's, it feels like the type of game that would be good on that device. Anyway, anyway, um, let's see. Asher here says hell divers looks fun. Uh, will water for a, will wait for a sale. I mean, in part, that's something you could do is wait for a sale. I, I got it. Uh, I, I think I was like G2A.com is the, uh, the coop is like the, the code the digital code reseller. And I got it for like, I think they're green man gaming. There was a coupon for like 17% off. So I got it for like 33 bucks, which is fine. I've already put enough hours into that game, um, to warrant that price. <laughs> I've already, I've already definitely put the hours in. Uh, so anyway, uh, what do we got here? Um, let me take a look here at, uh, I, I, <laughs> I love all the trolls. You guys are great. Thanks for the engagement. I appreciate it. H bar here for five says I watched Beverly Hills cop one over the weekend. Solid nine out of 10. Yeah. What have I been telling you about Beverly Hills cop, dude? For one, for one, you've got the pointer sisters, neutron dance. All right. Uh, that is in the opening action sequence when he's in the truck. Do, 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 you know, it's fucking awesome. Woohoo! It's just such a great, great fucking song to play in the opening of that movie. Uh, you got Paul Reiser in the cameo appearance, Judge Reinhold. You know Jonathan Banks is in it. It's got a solid uh, fucking Bronson Pinchot is in it. Great, great cast of characters. Funny ass movie. Uh, the banana and the tailpipe. You know, like <laughs> it's awesome, dude. Plus the fucking theme song, Axel Foley's theme song is the shit. Right, I'm looking forward to that coming back over the summer when they start getting ready to start pushing Axel F for Netflix, and you start hearing you know you're you're like you're just gonna get in. I'm gonna get into it so fucking hardcore, like nips cut glass, like that's how I know what I'm gonna get. Also, HRS here for five. Thank you. Says over the weekend, I also watched Angel and Demons, the second Da Vinci Code movie with Tim Honks. Also, randomly obvious, uh, Obi Wan was a priest in the Vatican. Over, oh, really? I haven't, I've seen the first Da Vinci Code movie. I never bothered with the other two. I don't know why. I just never bothered with the other two. To me, it's surprising that they made a, a sequ like a trilogy out of that. I just like never watched it. But like one of these days, I'm gonna want to go through like old Tom Hanks movies for some reason. Like I've been really kind of like thinking about it. Like like Joe versus the volcano for some reason. Like rewatching Forrest Gump, rewatching. 
uh, I don't know about Philadelphia. That might, that's a tough one to get through. That's a toughie. That's a toughie, you know, but like cast away, catch me if you can. Uh, Captain Phillips was fucking epic. He was great in that one. You know, Tom Hanks is, is Tom Hanks. He's just, he's Tom Hanks. He's fucking, he's fucking brilliant. You gotta love him. Uh, H here also says, I hope Beverly Hills cop four gets a physical release. I need the complete collection. I hope so too. I really hope so too. Netflix seems to be kind of opening up the door a bit for those more physical releases. Um, and I hope so as well. Cause I I'm excited to see what they do with this. All right. Uh, Andrew here for five. Thank you. I asked Brandon to draw a picture for me, but he asked me to pick out which squares on a picture contained the motorcycles first. <laughs> Are you sure that he isn't? <laughs> Dude, that's <laughs> cold blooded. Oh man. Uh, that's fucking funny. It's mean, dude. That's funny though, but that's mean. That's mean. Uh, Brandon's a nice guy. He just, he's just really into his animation. Uh, you know, also, uh, uh <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, Jess here says, I don't like it when I'm paying 64 a game and they add microtransactions up to Wazoo. Yeah, I know. I know it sucks. It sucks. It's, um, but again, it's not designed for you in that particular regard. They want you to, like, you know what I, okay, I love Ubisoft games. Like, I love the Assassin's Creed games. I can't even fucking tell you what, like, any of that weird ass, like, when they have their currency, I don't know what any of that does. Like, legitimately, I look at it, I look at those little items up there, and because they never appear in game, right, because you can't find them in game, I don't even bother with them. You know, like if I come across like a chest or something in the world and it's all like, oh, you have to have like these coins to open it or something. And it's like the fucking the currency. I'm like, fuck you. I'm not even going to bother with it. I'm just going to move on with my day. But it's weird how like it, it is weird how much they want people to to do that shit. And for a while, I think a lot of people were. But then remember, you had like loot boxes uh, described as gambling, I think, in like Belgium or something. And that kind of killed the loot box craze because we're not seeing much of those anymore. So they're always going to find another way to get your money down the road. Uh, but that's why also, again, just wait for sales. You don't have to buy everything right away. You don't have to buy everything right away. You can wait. You can wait. Like, as if you want to vote with your wallet and everything else, then just don't buy the game. Like, that's really about it. Like, look, I don't like, I think Gearbox as a company is fine. I refuse to support Gearbox in any capacity. As long as Randy Pitchford is involved in the company, I refuse to do it. I didn't get Borderlands three. I didn't get the pre sequel. You know what I mean? I I don't engage with them in any capacity. The movie looks funny, but even then, it's just like you know, it's Lionsgate, and they've already paid their licensing fees. You know, shit like that. I'm just saying, I can't I can't support Gearbox if Randy Pitchford is there. It's a strong, strong thing that i i have a conviction that i have because of how they treated alien colonial marines you know and so no fuck gearbox fuck randy pitchford predominantly and uh i hope when uh when embracer scuttles gearbox and they fucking siphon they this piecemeal off the content uh he goes away and he practice mad he practices magic in his own little fucking padded cell until he's no longer with us uh i just can't i can't fucking stand it can't stand it uh let's see if we if you sent me another question hunter i didn't see it so you gotta you gotta um let me know all right um h for sister how are the co-hosts haven't seen any on in a while i don't know i think they're okay i know rj is absolutely balls deep and i mean balls deep into final fantasy i don't think he has a life right now it's all final fantasy 7 rebirth it's just like him cooming over fucking uh, Tifa and gooning over Aerith. You know, he's just, he's just like, it brought me to tears. I, I, know, I never was into Final Fantasy the way that it was. I know, I know for RJ, I'm giving him shit, but I know he played it with his dad, so that's why he liked doing it. Um, as for Anna, I, I invited Anna in last night. Uh, she was asleep, so there's that. Um, and, you know, yeah, I, I kind of am where I am on stuff. People come and go as they please because I, I kind of do it whenever I feel like it. But, uh, you know, yeah, they're around. As far as I know, they're still alive. No one's told me otherwise. Uh, all right. Can't wait for Battlefront 1 and 2 on PS5. The two games are way better than EA Battlefront games, even though 2 got better with time. So here's here's the thing with that, right? Like, I don't know how good the new Battle 
the remasters of the Battlefront games are going to be. Like, I don't know if it's worth the 35 bucks for both games. That being said, my biggest complaint when I played Pandemic's uh, B- Battlefront 2 back in 05 was the net code for the Xbox was fucking terrible. Like, you, the multiplayer was was bad when it came to playing online against other people. But they've now fixed that. They're going to have servers available and they're going to have all that shit available like with the bots and everything else. I'm thinking it's going to probably be worth the investment only because it is going to be able to go back to like 20 years ago and relive games that were sadly like too ambitious for the time they were created. And even though the two reboots that we had you know with 2015 and 2017 respectfully uh coming out of dice and ea those games were not bad okay like were there problems yeah okay the loot box shit in battlefront 2 okay were they a bit uh you know again bit off more than they could chew in some ways sure but they were still fundamentally and functionally better than their predecessors they just didn't have the same vibe that the predecessors did the idea that, that you could jump you know into a plane Uh, or an x-wing or an a-wing or or, or whatever and fly around the map and then land it like trying to get like old battlefield 1945 maps right they tried that but there was the limitations uh with with what they were able to do those map sizes were way too small i don't know if they they bothered to fucking fix them but battlefront 2 given what ea what dice did to fix that shit that game is solidly good at this point in time they've just like they should have just kept updating it, adding in, you know, by 2019, having Mandalorian maps, having the Mandalorian skins, you know, doing all of that shit. If they would have introduced all the Mandalorian stuff uh, and Rise of Skywalker into Battlefront 2, I think they could and supported it. I still think the game would be popping off today. But again, the biggest problem is that you got something like fucking Fortnite, which is free to play. And it is it is functionally a good game. And people enjoy for the skin swaps and things like that, being able to play as their favorite characters. And the game has has created an ecosystem uh, to thrive on that particular front. And then even now you've got like Lego, was it Lego Fortnite, which from what I have seen of it looks pretty goddamn awesome, right? A lot of great destructive physics, things like that. And so I think people are like, you know, uh, you can kind of see what they're into. But going back to Battlefront 1 and 2, um, I might wait to see what people say about it, but it does come out right before my birthday. It's so like knowing me, I'm probably going to buy it. I'm probably going to buy it. Uh, let's see here. Astro here says, I miss Pandemic Studios, Destroy All Humans, Mercenaries, Battlefront, and the Saboteur. Yeah, man. You know what's funny is I actually did work the job with the voice actor who was the Saboteur. Um, I, uh, we, he was uh, uh, playing like a, like a slasher, like a, like, a, like a Jason character in this uh, Doritos commercial um that uh, we shot back in 2011 i want to see if i can find it let me see if i can if i could fucking if i could find that though so i don't know uh let me see there's also another one here from h Bart's saying pandemic battlefront 3 is one of the best games never finished yeah yeah i know i know um it is <laughs> uh you know uh, hold on, let me Google this here. Okay. And trying to find the uh, Doritos smash the Super Bowl commercials. Anyway, yeah, I, I remember seeing the um the the Battlefront 3 leak. And uh didn't like didn't the actual code come out too? Weren't people um actually able uh to do that? Right? Um I would I would like to think that uh eventually someone will remake it in fucking you know um 2000 uh, or not 2000 somebody will make remake it in in i in in ue5 is what i'm thinking i'm I'm really hopeful that uh that somebody actually uh remakes that for for uh, using it because i think they could they could probably do it pretty well you know what i mean um it's uh i think um could be good. Oh, sorry, let me just take another another stab at this here. Um, I'm trying to fucking find this one. Okay. Um, horror slasher commercial. See if I can. They should. They probably must. They must have put it online. 
uh, I really wish I knew the fucking, I really wish I knew everything. Cause that, I, maybe he didn't cause uh, you know, whatever. Damn it. I would love to show you guys because it's been so long that I'd love to be able to show you guys the stupid thing that I did the sound for. Um, uh, hold on. His name was Robin Atkin Downs. Robin Atkin Downs. Let's see. Nothing. Uh, damn it. Well, that sucks. I really was hoping that we'd be able to, to see him. Cause like, I don't know if he's ever mentioned it anywhere. Um, if he ever fucking said anything, it's nope. I can't get the, uh, let's see. Oh, oh, I got it. I found it. All right. Okay. All right. We got it. It's in shitty ass quality, but we fucking found it. Let me, let me show you guys this one here. Um, all right. Where is that? I don't even know how the fuck I got on the subject, but I did. Okay. So this is in glorious 280p. Unfortunately, glorious 280p. But let me just kind of set the stage real quick, right? So you got this. This is called the hitchhikers. Okay. Now you see this woman here in, in a very kind of like, you know, short cocktail dress, right? Whatever. We shot this in the middle of the night in Burbank, California in November. All right. It was freezing fucking cold in Burbank when we shot this. All right. So I'll, I'll take you guys through it because it's kind of it's 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 interesting. Oh, you play hockey. Super fun. OK, if I move this. Oh my gosh, Doritos! I can have some, right? Wrong answer! I was gonna share! Okay, so, it's short, right? Okay. Let me just, let me just point this out. Because this is when I, I tell the story to people. We're in this, we're, we're in this car, right? What is this? This is a fucking, look at this. It's like an old ass Plymouth, right? So I was doing the sound for this, this commercial. They, they originally pitched it as being, uh, two nights, five hours a night. So 10 hours total. We're going to get in real quick, get out everything, right? Uh, it turned into two 14 hour nights and I only was paid a hundred dollars for those two nights complete waste of my time on that front however fun commercial to work on so like i said i was doing sound so i'm in this i'm I'm in this shot you just can't see me okay i'm not behind them in the back seat of the car okay we can kind of maybe get a better shot here of the of her right so see how tiny that back seat is okay my fat ass could not fit under back there they couldn't fit back there at all so when we're looking at this straight ahead shot here of them, okay, right? We have the camera mounted on the, the hood of the car. Okay. In front of them, in front of the vehicle is, uh, like the, the SUV with the director, the DP, everybody. Right. And so we're tracking them as we're filming this again, I'm monitoring sound. So you can't see, I've got lavalier mics that are mounted under, uh, at the visor right above him and right above her. So where exactly would I be? Where would I be if I'm in the shot and if I'm not in the back seat? Where could I possibly be? Okay. I'll tell you, I'm right fucking there in the trunk of that goddamn car. Now the trunk is big and it fit me just fine. It was a snug fit, but it fit. I'm in the trunk of this car as we are driving around. Okay. See this part where they're driving? I'm in the trunk of that car. Well, I'm in the trunk of the car while we're, while we're doing this shit right here okay not not the others if i was out at that point but we were shooting this in burbank and robin atkin downs who is the mask uh the the masked killer right there he's the voice of the saboteur he was in uh he was the bad guy in uncharted 3 he does a lot of voice acting or whatever really solid really nice dude had a great time chatting with him but like he's driving the car i'm in the trunk of the car at one point he hits this dip 
and it just rockets me up and slams me into the uh to the roof of this trunk uh and they were like they were like oh shit jarbo are you okay are you alive man and i'm just like get me the fuck out of here um but yeah i did that t- t- fuck dude 14 t- 28 hours for a hundred bucks and shit it was just not worth it but i do think the commercial turned out okay it was funny because like the guy who directed this was actually a, an artist right and um really really nice guy has a place in burbank you know like worked with like tim burton and shit uh they did this in after effects so like you know we it's, you know they did this very quickly in after effects and uh to give it the look right there and this is in 2011 by the way this shit nowadays you could probably do with a fucking filter on your phone like that's just how advanced we've become but that that's what happened with that shit i thought that was kind of fun um working on that one way back in the day uh let's see here okay h bart's asking did you see thousands attended navalny's funeral in moscow against the government's wishes and they uh chanted anti-putin stuff i did i also saw that a bunch of them got arrested uh, for doing that too so you know and what's funny about that is navalny knew he was going to die uh, you know what i mean like he knew he was going to die and i think he was like prepared for death but i also think that like you know putin kept him around for a while for a specific reason or two so i i personally think that when putin decided to kill him it was it was right after the tucker interview and i think he did it as a way to prove to tucker i really think it was a a signal to tucker because tucker had said something along the lines of well sometimes you have to kill people you know and they were basically laughing at tucker so he's all like you know he, he probably thought like tucker was a pussy and just wanted to show him sort of thing like he fucking like he had that dude killed like that he had that guy killed he could have had him killed any other time there's got to be a coincidence as for when it happened it does suck that it happened though it really does um jarbo this mortal life that's what the fuck you talking about jesus christ okay you guys all right Uh, i'm just i'm bored of this guy right here um okay so matt got stuffed in the trunk yes i got stuffed in the trunk for a couple hours i did i did uh, let's see. Rational asking, did I see Fetterman going after progressives? Uh, I did not, but I don't think Fetterman's going to last. Um, uh, I think Fetterman is not going to last as a Senator next time around. He was useful against Dr. Oz. That might be his only fucking, his only like stat- thing that he's done. I, I don't know why, like, look, I know the actually I do kind of know why I have, I have opinions. I have theories about all that. So the way I look at it is this. Okay. I, I look at it like Fetterman, Fetterman is in over his head. I think we can be fair about that. Okay. Like he was running Lieutenant governor. People liked him up against Dr. Oz, a very unlikable guy who doesn't even live in the state, you know, all that stuff. He wins, he gets in, he has a, remember he had a stroke before then. So he's going in, he's already kind of like an underdog, but he's an underdog with a disability. And now that he's an underdog with a disability, you know, what we're looking at is uh, people are like going after him, going after him, going after him, going after him, right? And so who protects him though? Like Schumer protects him. Schumer protects him. Schumer, remember they were going to let him like uh, wear whatever he wanted, a hoodie to go to the Senate, to, to the to the Senate floor. You know, he was like going to be able to like wear like his Dickies and Crocs to the Senate floor. Like, I mean, sure, with Kristen Cinema, it's, you know, it's 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 flamboyant, but it's within the realm of passable. You know, but he was gonna go and not be in a suit and tie and whatever. And I'm and largely, largely all things considered, I'm okay with that. Mostly because I don't care for the decorum of it anyway. I feel the decorum makes people hoity toity and up their own fucking ass. But I do think also that this that like Chuck Chuck Schumer and other Senate and other uh, uh, Senate Democrats protected him and 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 didn't you know like get on board with the calls for him to resign due to his issues because you know he checked himself into like like you know was it was it not rehab but like he checked himself into a facility because he was battling depression not long after getting like you know getting elected he's still in his first year obviously the guy the guy is in over his head and what he's doing right now by the the pro-zionist shit and going after progressives is he is doing the bidding of Ch- of Chuck Schumer. He's doing the bidding 
of these, you know, these corporate Democrats uh, who are higher up in leadership who protected him. He's now their guard dog. You know, you might as, if you see Fetterman, you might as well see people like woof, woof, right? Because like, that's what he is. He's a guard dog. So he's going to protect their interests because they looked after him. All right. Like that. He's loyal, right? He's going to kiss the ring. He's fucking joined the mob, if you will, which is a shame because like, I liked it. I, I thought he was a breath of fresh air, a kind of like fucking no nonsense dude rolling in from Philly. Just like, fuck y'all. I'm going to do what I want to do and shit. We're going to fucking, you know, knock some fucking heads and spread some progressive ideologies. And then he's just sold himself out because he's in over his fucking head, but it's still better for our country that he's there than Dr. Oz. So that's the fucking problem. So I don't really care if he's going after progressives because he has no institutional power. He doesn't. He doesn't. He's, he's bottom. He's low man on the totem pole. He's got six years in this gig or five and a half more years in this gig. Uh, sorry. No, 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 no. It's five more years in this gig. And, uh, and he's just going to do it once. And he's just going to fucking, he's just going to fucking, you know, dip out. Right. So he's got his time. He'll do it. He'll be a, a vote. The Democrats can use to pass legislation, which is needed. But otherwise he's, he's just going to be like, he's going to be forgotten in a couple of years, which sucks because he had an opportunity to actually kind of fucking come out, uh, and, and, and make a change and make some change. But in the meantime, he just, he's just up his own ass up his own ass because he's just he's just protecting matt is advocating for a pantless society yeah no fucking shit <laughs> like are you kidding me i were fucking sure uh uh i uh, don't drop any g slurs jesus anyway uh let's see here hold on okay h bart's here thank you says i'm gonna follow the chat's advice and stop paying you so this is your last super chat jar, but whoa, man, the chat, don't, don't tell him what to do. The man, the man, the man's his own man. He can do what he wants, <laughs> but thank you. H. Wright, so I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, let's see here. What else have I got? Uh, senators need casual Fridays. Yeah, sure. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, H. Bart says if I was rich, I would dress like a bum on purpose. Hell yeah, dude. Fucking Crocs and like move to a tropical environment, rock Crocs and a comfortable pair of fucking shorts and a tank top all fucking day. People look at you like you're the crazy old guy, but you're worth, you're worth some fucking money. Just be comfy. He's got to be comfy. Sorry. I just was at an angle. We'll take a drink there. No, you, you just got to be comfy in life, you know? Like there's nothing wrong with that. Like I love the fact that as we, when we get into warmer time at work, I got to wear shorts. Like it's, 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 it's part of the acceptable workplace attire. One of the guys we just lost, um, which I figured was going to happen. He showed up a couple times in like sweatpants, you know, uh, when he was doing like the overnight stuff and like, you know, like employees complained, but like no one did anything because the job's pretty lenient, but he did it like more than once, you know what I mean? And like, um, y yeah, it it's just like, nah, man, nah, you, you can't. And then I've seen him like in jeans and stuff as well. Like we have to wear, we have to wear like, you know, not like luxury attire. Like I wear, I wear nice pants, nice shoes, you know, a fucking nice fleece, things like that. Anyway. Uh, let's see. Don't, don't listen to us. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. Reed is okay. What did I say? Nervous slip. What did I say? Cause a pantsless society. Mo, I, I advocate for shorts. Okay. Shorts are just short pants. Jess here says no cargo pants. I don't know, man. I don't know. Cargo has got the pockets. You gotta love the pockets, man. The pockets are good. The pockets are great. I mean that guy you got? I didn't get anyone fired. Shut the fuck up, Mo. Anyway, uh, Caliber here says, if I wanted to be a meme president in 2077, I'll be 82 fucking years old. I don't know why you'd have to wait till 2077. Is that just because of cyberpunk? Uh, 2077, I'll be 95 years old if I'm still alive in 2077. Uh, rational asking, did I see that Netflix DC studios document? Yeah, man. If you guys don't know about that. So some, some fucking dude, some dingleberry on, on fucking Twitter, right? Creates this, um, creates this stupid fucking account, man. Like, holy fucking shit. He create, I'm going to bring it up here. I'll show you guys. He, he, he creates this, um, fake ass document 
talking about, um, you know, wanting to bring, what is it like, uh, uh, the merging of, you know, Netflix and fucking DC, right. For the Snyder stuff, you know, just wanting to make sure that like, you know, the Snell, the cell movie, if you guys don't know what's going on with that, if you're not from a part of that world, long story short, see this idiot here, the ski walker, the Jedi guy, right? He has me blocked by the way, just as an FYI. Um, and they have me blocked. I, I'm not blocked on this one here either, but they've got this like sell Snyder versus Netflix thing going on. They want Zack Snyder to continue his movies. I want to see those movies too, but it ain't going to fucking happen. But some guy here, Larry Cruz work for Netflix and want everyone who likes what we do to get what they want. My goal is to tell you what's really going on. BTS like private meetings. Yeah. Written like uh like English is your, not even your second language, like your eighth language here. Okay. So what he does is he prints this up right here. I'm just going to bring this up in another image, share this tab. So we can just so we can zoom in, we can enhance like we're fucking blade runner. All right. First and foremost here, look at this. Okay. You got Netflix logo and DC studios logo, obviously found online, obviously found with PNG, not even matched to be the same size. Right. So the DC studios logo is, is bigger than the Netflix logo. They weren't even, you know, properly spaced. It looks shitty. Then it says here, the license agreement Snyderverse <laughs> is entered, uh, into on February 27th, 2024 between Netflix represented by its CEOs, Greg Peters and Ted Sarandos and DC studios represented by its CEOs, James Gunn and Peter Safran, by the way, like there's like no punctuation there. I think, no, I think I see, uh, Oh, that's, that's really into it. Uh, I think I see a, uh, a period there, but number one license grant DC studios hereby grants Netflix a non-exclusive worldwide license to use the intellectual property known as Snyderverse for the purpose of creating and producing and distributing content on Netflix streaming platform scope of license, the license granted her herein allows Netflix to utilize the license property solely for the creation of production and distribution of content, including, but not limited to films, television series, documentaries, and related promotional materials within the Netflix streaming service. But notice also there's like a spacing issue between materials and within uh, number three restrictions, Netflix shall not sub license transfer or assign its rights under this agreement to any third party without prior written consent of DC studios. Netflix shall not utilize the licensed property in any manner that disparages or tarnishes the reputation or goodwill associated with DC Studios. <laughs> what the fuck? All right. So homie just fucking drops this shit. But then it gets even fucking better. All right. Then it gets even better. Now we have term and termination. This agreement shall commence on the effective date and shall continue in effect until terminated by either party upon 30 days prior written notice to the other party. There's usually like a date with this kind of stuff, but whatever. Uh, either party may terminate agreement immediately upon written notice if the other party breaches any material term or condition of this agreement and fails to cure such breach within 30 days following written notice of the breach. Going into the breach. So I guess they're working on another fucking uh, Pacific Rim movie. Compensation. In consideration for the rights granted her in Netflix, I'll pay DC Studios a licensing fee upon the execution of the screen. But like, what's the number then? What would be the number? What is the license agreement number? How much money are you going to fucking make? Right? It's like, like, look at this here. It's just, it's <laughs> so stupid. Anyway, anyway, here, here's the, the key thing with this, right? The key, the key thing with this is that nobody believes that this is real, by the way. Nobody believes that this is real. Everyone is mocking this thing. Everyone is fucking making fun of this goddamn thing. Okay. Um, you know, that's kind of the whole like point of this is that everyone is just fucking laughing their dick off at it. You know, this guy here, this is the saddest thing I've seen on this website so far this week. Not entirely wrong. Uh, I mean, no one, no one is believing, is believing this. Everyone is laughing at this, you know, I mean, look, is and the guy, the guy is not even verified with 500 followers. So he's not even making any fucking money on it. You know, 165,000 views. I mean, it's not much, right? But who's this guy? Like, what does he got here? March 4th. Okay. That was yesterday. This is everything I know, uh, how my CEOs, Greg and Ted were able to get the rights for Zach's universe, fulfilling what you've hardworking fans pushing, uh, for this to hashtags for. Uh, and then it's just like 
The Batman, written by Ben Affleck. It's just, Jesus. It's, <laughs> he's trying so hard. Henry Lennox will return as Martian Manhunter and our recently acquired Snyderverse for a six episode limited origin series and have lots of important roles for everything else coming after. It's like they're going to do a fucking six fucking episode limited series on Martian Manhunter. You know, okay. It's just hysterical, man. Here we go. Henry Cavill is coming here to our headquarters to have a meeting with Greg and Ted this Friday. You know, it's just it, the whole thing is ridiculous, right? It's all fan fiction. It's all fan fiction. And I kind of feel bad because there are people out there who do really want this. People out there who really, really, really want to watch this shit play out. They want to see these movies and people are just going to play play on them, right? And it's not even pretty funny. Uh, Queen Danny says here, Jarbos doesn't want to admit that Miles is more popular than Peter Parker because he's not. Does this mean the return to the Poindexter Lounge? Uh, well, I mean, Enosh the other day did say that he is coming back, but we've been, you know, we've been hearing this forever. Um, you know, I, I look personally, all things considered, like the the dude has got a, you know a new job. He's got his 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 woman. He's got his family. He's got his church that he runs. Uh, he don't have time for streaming, right? He doesn't have time for streaming at all, you know, and not, not the way that he used to do it. And I, and again, like the fact that him streaming ultimately cost him his marriage, um, it, well, that's a little bit ahead of myself on that one. Uh, it didn't help his marriage to be fair. I don't see him coming back. Um, I, I do, I do see like the occasional, like once in a while sort of thing, but, but it's not. Um, let's see. H parts here says, I hope William won't believe this. <laughs> uh, LOL. I love William though. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jesse for five. Thank you very much. Uh, speaking of misspelling, what about the Willie's chocolate factory experience? So much things have come out. I know I want to do like a deeper dive on that. Maybe I will conduct all that information like tomorrow to go through and do a, a big dive. I know that the one woman, um, the, the sad Oompa Loompa, right? The sad, <laughs> the sad, um, uh, what's, yeah, here we go. Let me try and find it. Let me find it here. The sad Oompa Loompa lady. Um, she actually, uh, has decided to kind of capitalize on this. And you know what? I, I give her credit. So here's something that came out today is, uh, so this is her, this is sad Oompa Loompa. Like you look at sad Oompa Loompa lady. All right. And then like that one image of her and then you see her here and she's like, like, like way cuter than what it was. But uh, here we go. Check this out. Hello, everyone. It is the Scottish Oompa Loompa from the Glaswegian Willy Wonka experience. And I am here to do your personalized videos and all your requests for you. And the actual outfit of the event. But it's the first time it's been shown. <laughs> Okay, so so her name is uh, Kirsty Patterson, okay, and you can see here, like if we can see her, her her bio, well, her biopic is is that image of the sad Oompa Loompa. So she's uh, you know she's out there right now, and she's capitalizing on capitalizing on this. So Fourteen thousand people, uh, the Ouija Oompa Loompa, uh, you know. So she's got she's working on it, you know, and she's like uh trying to here's the here's the willy wonka tea i guess i'll see so basically everyone keeps on asking me what happened just remember this is me just turning on my phone and it's just been mental i'm off to london and everything it's just wild so basically i'll start what happened from the event from the start to the end it's honestly it's just wild right what's happened from the start and the end of the event Basically, when I turned up on the Friday, um, I looked around and I seen the set wasn't finished and there was like a random mushroom in a corner of the room. There was like some sweets kind of, sweet statue things. Honestly, it was awful. Um, so when I turned up, I was thinking to myself going, mm. they were like, they were working through the night. This is going to be better. I was like looking around, well, maybe they're working through the night. Maybe this will be better. 
um, by this point, me and other actors signed our contracts. So basically, we were stuck. So we got given this script and it just said the most bizarre things on it, right? It just, the stuff on it didn't really make, it just didn't make sense what they were saying on the script. And anyway, the Wonkers got the brunt of the crappy lines, right? Um, and I just thought to myself, going, what, what is this about? Like, what actually is this? Questioning my sanity at this point, even at this point. And by this point, me and the actors were sceptical. And this is where we were like, right, let's just go through this together. Maybe tomorrow's going to be a better day. Maybe the scene's going to be better. All this, right. Got everyone's number and everything. That night, I was actually this close to not going in. Like, this close to not going in. It got to the point where I didn't care how well I got paid because we're going to get well paid for the event as well. Um... I'm someone who will go through something but then we'll think about it loads later. So I was up all night. I couldn't really sleep, to be honest with you. I was a bit, like, horrified. Like, do I do this, do I not? But yeah, I, I went in and I was also sceptical about the costumes because considering how well they were going to pay us for the event and how much they were charging, I assumed they would have, like, a makeup artist or someone who knows how to do makeup. Um... Aye, if you're spending that much money on something, like, you think you'd have, especially for a Willy Wonka event, that you were going to have this amazing, amazing outfit that was just going to be out this world, you know. And then okay, so, like, I don't, I don't know how much more I'm gonna go, of this I'm going to go through. Um, I, I get it. She's trying to retell a story and give her thoughts on it and her experience on everything else. What I find to be interesting about this whole story is that like you know they were the, the when she mentions that they were all going to be paid pretty well someone had invested money into this someone really did they rented out a space they they bought the website domain they ran the they ran the marketing they paid for the marketing uh they put money into this expecting to make money out of it they were charging 35 uh pounds per per person to go to this event and i i mean i don't know what that is in us currency but they were expecting a large enough turnout to be able to warrant spending that kind of money and and again to not have uh uh props you can tell some of those banners that they bought they bought off amazon some of those backdrops and so on amazon it looks bigger than what it is right amazon will say like you know they'll advertise this like uh this great looking backdrop this willy wonka-esque backdrop yada 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 right and then you get there and it's like fucking tiny what i would have done if it was me is i would have had it uh the image created on artificial intelligence i would have gone into like magnific and upscaled it right fucking super high resolution a resolution 4k then gone over to uh, um shutterfly all right and then had it printed out on a fucking like shower curtain remember my old mundane mat fucking shower curtain that i used to use as a backdrop that cost me like 35 bucks through shutterfly you know and it, the print quality was great it still looks great i've had that thing since like 2016 now i think 2017 when i, I got it when i moved into my house and fucking it's still it's folded up in a corner it's it's put what's i said it's put away in a drawer never to come out again in any kind of public capacity but it's like it's still there and it still looks really really good so like their print quality is good so you could have had printed out and it would have only cost you like 35 bucks per one or whatever and you could have made it a big deal and put more money into it i mean i i i don't view this as being something that is a scam to try to get people to like pay money and like get scammed to get ripped off like i know people said that it was a scam but I really think the person who did it just like bit off more than he could chew, like in any capacity, just bit off more than he could chew. And, and that ended up being like the big issue for this, uh, is what I, is what I think, uh, is what I think happened there. Uh, okay. Astro here says 35 pounds is about 44 and a half bucks. Okay. Thank you. Parallax. How can we forget about the little blue skull? I mean, look, it's <laughs> It sucks because I, I do like the skull, man. I do I do miss the skull, you know? I do, but, like, it's not me anymore. It's it's not who I am. I mean, even the Unibowler is awesome, uh, you know? Uh, I love the Unibowler. I, I, I love this. I, I You know, these are both 
like fan made things uh you know i don't know who who made this or, or i don't remember who made this but but i i fucking i i love them i do i i i miss the skull i do miss the skull i think the skull was absolutely part of my personality you know what i mean so it kind of sucks uh it's kind of sucks rj is on mme live of course he is here's the thing with that right i'm glad rj is going on and and and, and reconciling with max um i think it's pretty funny that um that max you know did what he did uh, you know and that they've been able to work it out good for them to be fair um i find it to be really funny that like uh all of the blame for all of that and, and at least in regard to max's own personality fell back on me i was the villain and all that shit apparently uh I, I wasn't the one trying to commit extortion but whatever so good for them i miss the skull and poli i don't miss poli I don't miss Polly the polar bear, not one fucking bit. Why does everyone like Polly the goddamn polar bear? You know, like why does everybody like that shit? It's I'm. Is it because I I made a puppet in a very like southern accent or dumbass accent? Like it's me, Polly the polar bear. Oh, Polly the polar bear. The word of the day is or something like that. I don't know. Hey kids, it's me, Polly the polar bear. I think that's the voice. I haven't done it in forever. Um, people like it. It's stupid. Bring, bring back poli bring back the skull uh it's funny how all this shit started with enosh who dipped yeah 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 although you know what's funny is you know what's funny is um one of my old accounts hold on um uh, let me see if i can find it here uh let's see if i can find it if i can find the old 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 image um <laughs> like i forget i forget exactly how i found the image that i used for the blue skull initially for mundane matt um i remember why i did it i remember why i changed it to that um what happened was i had an old uh south park avatar right that kind of looked like me and when I had um, that, I was on Twitter and I was causing a bit of a, a bit of a ruckus one day. And this one dude, uh, his name is K Thor Jensen. You know, like him and I got into it and whatever. Oh, there we go. Then I found it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, let me let me just. I'll bring it up here. But anyway, K Thor Jensen and I were getting into it on Twitter, and he uh, found out. Like, I didn't think people could find out who I was, but he found out who I was, right? He found out, like, my name, like, legitimately my YouTube, my, my old YouTube channel, everything, okay? And, uh, you know, this, there we go. There's the old skull, just for fun, just for fucking, just for shits and grins going down memory fucking lane. But anyway, he found it, and, like, I got, like, I got kind of pissed off about it, I guess, or whatever, you know? And, like... I, I kind of said, fuck it. And I just went and I found, I just like looked up a skull and, and I came across this one and I just snagged it. Right. And I just used it as the logo. I think it's, I still think it looks fucking dope as shit. All right. Uh, you know, and so like, that's how that happened. And then somebody, uh, around, you know, I think around 2015 or maybe it was the fall of 2014. I forget when someone went and then made the chibi skull right they did the chibi skull and then somebody else kind of like upscaled it and that's the one that we've got uh, that's the this one here is that so yeah it's a whole evolution of everything i know it sounds kind of dumb and probably nobody gives a fuck but i do uh parallax here says it was peak comedy it could have been the next triumph it, it was a one note joke though man it was a one note joke it was just a puppet saying like the word of the day is and then like, you know, what, did I, I, you know, and then I just say a, a random string of, of nothing, you know, baseless, fucking stupid ass stereotypical insults. It's like, it's, 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 it, there's no evolution to the, like there's, it, you know, Poli could have gone out and been like, what, gone to fucking like Trump rallies or some shit and been all like, hi everyone, my name is Poli the polar bear. So who are you voting for this fucking, this fucking how is this, 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 this voting season? what it just it wouldn't have been like oh look at this guy he's got you know he got pants i don't know i can't i i'm not that kind of comic i'm not even much of a comic i say stupid funny things sometimes but i don't know 
I, it was just something dumb that it flashed in the pan that sat on largely unnoticed for about six years. Literally sat unnoticed for like six years. And then, and then one person found it. And the reason why, and this is my belief, the reason why people who found it found it is because people were going through at that time and mass reporting every single one of my videos. I'm not even kidding you. I had a bunch of them get age restricted. I had some, get, uh, one of them got taken down that I fought to get back up and I got it back up, but people were going through and flagging all of my shit around that time. And I think they went back through like my 5,000 videos and they found that way back early on in the early days of, of, of the channel. And that's, then they brought that up and then everything else went to shit that night. There was, again, there was a concerted effort of bullshit going on back then. And I was my own fool. Don't get me wrong. Um, I clearly made mistakes, but there was a lot that was happening. So I, I again, like, you know, the polar bear shit's so fucking dumb. I make fun of it now because that's how dumb it is. You know, uh, let's see, Parallax here says, Polly could have made the ADL list of, hey, like, <laughs> Uh, 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 you know what I'm, if I would have, if I would have stayed on that pathway and I would have kept doing it, like if, if Polly the polar bear would have, would have actually worked as an experiment back in 2012, when, when we were still in the wild west of the internet and people really liked it, it is probably pretty entirely accurate to make the assumption that I would have probably said something about the Jews. You know what I mean? But like, again, I don't feel the way that I said, I don't feel anything negative towards anybody uh, or any race, any group of people, whatever, man, I'm, I'm fucking, I'm copacetic. I'm cool. Right. I'm chill. I don't care. Right. It's not, it, it, you know, whatever, but it's like, just like the, you know, pointing out stereotypes and then amplifying stereotypes through like uh, a, a, a polar bear puppet. That was the whole joke, but it was still a one note joke. Not everyone is going to like it, and that's that's all right. That's okay. Uh, let's see here. Matt, did you do a video called How to See Movies for Cheap? I think so. I know I did one called, like, the, the uh, was it the United Bank of GameStop? Like, how to, how to invest your money in GameStop. But it wasn't through stocks. It was just through pre-orders. <laughs> anyway. 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 <laughs> Uh, we need mundane Matt. We no, we don't need mundane Matt. We don't need, look, I'm not mundane Matt anymore. I'm not that person anymore. All right. Look at my video from last night. I spent like an hour and a half going off on conservatives. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I stand by everything I said last night, uh, every point that I made, I stand by that shit. And so we got people here tonight trying to fucking troll a little bit because of that shit. All right. Like mundane Matt is, is just whatever is gone. Like, do I still dislike Crayon head SJWs in their echo chambers. Yeah, I do. Do I also fucking dislike MAGA hat wearing Trump supporters in their echo chambers? Absolutely. They both fucking suck. All right. They both are idiotic and, and ridiculously stupid. I have no issue saying that whatsoever. All right. Like I, I am a lefty who supports Bernie Sanders. I'm a progressive who supports policy. That's what I care about. I care about policy. I don't care about tone policing. Oh no, somebody said a naughty word. I don't fucking care. I don't fucking care. I, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't help kids get, being mad about that doesn't help kids get better education. It, do, it doesn't help, you know, kids be ready for to take on the fucking challenges of the world that, that we're going to face as we go into this next paradigm shift in the next couple of years with artificial intelligence and everything else. I don't give a shit because none of it matters. None of it matters. Not one, not one iota of it matters outside of policy. Uh, I am mundane mad on Helldivers too. I, yeah, it's because I fucking brought up my old Steam account. Show the video of me at E3. I'm not going to show the video of me at E3. Show Uncle Secret Agent. <laughs> no, that was so bad. I got the update that that was like 14 years old, man. I got the update about that. Um, no, 15 years old. It's 15 years old now. Holy shit. Show dichotomy a tribute to John Woo. That that's that's a yeah. You just look you you're just going through like videos on my old channel. Uh, what are my thoughts on Cinema announcing her retirement from the Senate? Good. Don't let the door hit her on her ass on the way out. Fuck Kristen Cinema. Fucking tired ass heifer. Jesus Christ, I don't like her at all. Uh, H. Bryce here says Elmo loved Poldy a lot. He wants you to bring it back. 
See, did you watch all of the Poli videos or did you just watch the one Poli video? Because there wasn't just one, there were four. And I don't think people got the other ones as well. I know one of them was about feminists. I think one of them was about Mexicans. I don't remember what the fourth one was, but they're all deleted. So there you go. Uh, Rational here says, I miss your old content where it was you in sunglasses and you would film your Xbox 360 footage. Yeah, I miss those days too, man. I miss those days too when I was in college doing that shit. My, like, my deathmatch 360 fucking pitch. Um, you know... No, I know what that crossplay means that PS5 and PS PC players are playing together. I know that this is. I know that. Uh, what happened at E3? Did you have a spoon you level meltdown? No, I went to E3 in 2006. And um, I had a couple reasons for going. So for one, I wanted to capitalize on the exclusivity of E3. And I brought two video cameras, uh, four, three other people, my whole PC, and I, I, I rented us a hotel room uh, to be able to do this. And the idea there was, uh, oh, hey, what's up, Caden? Um, so the, I, the idea there essentially was that we were going to go to E3 and we were going to uh, film it as best of our ability. And then I was going to compile all the clips together because this is early days of YouTube, right? This is really early days. IGN didn't really have video presence there. No one had video presence there, really. It wasn't a thing. No one thought about YouTube as being an avenue. But I did because I was in film school at the time. So I really thought about it being an avenue to like showcase work. But the other side of that too, I was like, well, wait a minute, maybe, maybe I could sell a DVD with all the gameplay footage because I think someone had done that before. I'd seen that online where someone is like selling off like video footage of like the press conferences because the press conferences now they're all vid now they're all fucking streamed right and everyone watches all those press conferences yeah but back in the day you had to like you had to wait for information to come out people had to like go to the press conference and then they had to immediately like leave the conference and r maybe they were texting their friends back at the hotel what was happening during the show Right. So then they could do live updates for their blog or whatever, but they had to rush back out with any footage, with any video footage, whatever, in order to get that crap uh, on. That's funny, though. Like, though, like, that's like um, this whole live streaming of conferences and, you know, the panels and stuff. It's a relatively recent thing, though, which is crazy to think about. Well, I mean, it's always kind of been like with the way E3 operated, though, was they that was like your first insider look into what was going on. Right. The, for the problem, though, is that what people don't realize is that the E3 press conferences weren't for the gamers. They were for the shareholders. Yeah. They just framed the it around that. CinemaCon. Yeah. Cinema, right. CinemaCon is absolutely for shareholders, but they it's invite for shareholders and theater, the, theater, owners. Cinema, theater yeah. owners and and like uh uh, you know merch like uh, uh merch so, yeah we, well no you've got like make the popcorn the, the candy, yeah, you, yeah concessions like, yeah, yeah concessions you've got theater like the the projectors yeah, it's, it's not the, really yeah it wasn't really for press and yeah then, until like seven years ago i would love they, to go to CinemaCon, and oh, uh and i would probably be i would probably be as like impressed with walking around like the actual convention floor and looking at what they're bringing yeah. in the theaters as much as I would be to go in and see what the talks are. But at the same time, if I go to CinemaCon, you know who's going to be there, right? Fucking Signor. Oh, yeah, Signor is going to yeah. be there. So it's it's more or less like I, it would it would turn into some shit. Absolutely, it would turn into some shit. But this whole point though of going to E3 and filming it was we wanted to sell a DVD. We did. I wanted to call it. I wanted to call it E3 from the outside in, right, or from the inside out. And then what happened was I uh, was in a document a documentary filmmaking class at the time. And my teacher was like, well, you have to do a project. And mm -hmm. I was like, well, can I like before I left to go to E3? I'm like, well, I'm taking off a couple of days. I'm going to this convention in L.A. Could I film that as a documentary and turn that in as my project? And he's like. Oh yeah, you can absolutely do that. So we had then dual reasons to go. So we shot the mm -hmm. video footage and then like, have you ever seen that video? Have you ever seen the E3 from the outside in no. or, or whatever? Hold on. I'll bring it up. It's fucking dude. It's so shitty. <laughs> like I can't even begin. I can't even begin to tell you how shitty it is. It's fucking shitty. Um, 
like it's just it was just i i didn't really i can't say i really knew what i was doing necessarily i guess um i you know i i didn't edit it all things considered but i'm also like i'm also really um you know my old work my old work is like cringy as fuck to be honest with you mm -hmm. so you know like it's it's pretty pretty bad um hold on here i mean god i was fucking fat uh i mean i'm still fucking fat i'm just less fat than i was uh during this shit um all right hold on god damn it um oh wow trying to find it here i'm just looking at like the timeline of youtube in like 2000 2005 to oh. 2007 and yeah. during that time only 100 million vi vi videos were uploaded now yeah, it's well, more than that. like of course it's more than that but. yeah but dude this 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 video uh it's from 17 years ago 18 wow. years ago this may that's how long ago this is all right so this is yeah um this is called e3 from the outside in i'm probably going to get co copyright struck from the music but that's fine Real quick, this was edited on uh, uh, Adobe Premiere 3. Oh, wow. So, like, as for, like, yeah, this is old school, very basic Adobe Premiere. We shot this on two Sony mini DV camcorders. <laughs> just as an FYI. Okay, and that's just so you know, I didn't edit this, but I did oversee the edit, and the guy who, who did edit it was, like, supposedly, like, good. He's a lawyer now just so just as an fyi not a great not a great editor but he's a lawyer so there we go video games for years they were known as something only the unpopular kids would play but as technology advanced so did society's acceptance of this once taboo form of entertainment to help with the ever-growing video game fan base a convention was created to showcase the latest and the greatest the industry has to offer the Electronics Entertainment Exposition, or E3 as it is known to the gaming realm, is the largest convention of its kind in the entire world. Every May, the city of Los Angeles prepares its convention center for the three-day onslaught of the hottest games, gizmos, and girls. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Booth, this Just is back, this games, is in 2006. Gizmos, and girls. Think, think about that, right? Think about This is in 2006. This is when booth babes were a thing. But yet here we are more or less like using a creep shot, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't recall me being the one to film this. But then again, it's been so long. Maybe I was just filming randomly. We just needed to like have an insert shot. And that's what we got. Also, like notice the quality is completely terrible. Uh, that's, you know, by design. But yeah, oh God, it's so fucking cringe. So cringe. To get an outsider's opinion of the convention, we sent a team of amateur filmmakers in. By the way, that look look at me. Look at me right there. The goatee. All right. I got just wow. the goatee and I got I was growing my hair out at the time. Uh it was actually uh longer than that. This was in May of 06. I didn't cut it again until November, in which case at that point it was down almost to like my shoulders. It had grown really fast. This is like crazy but as you can tell me with longer hair does not look good does not look good not at all into e3 to see firsthand what it's all about here's here's a copyrighted music <laughs> Wait, wait, what happened to He fell, he fell on he fell on purpose. He fell on purpose. Oh, okay. Right? Like, he's just trying to be funny okay. about it. Yeah, he's just trying to be funny about it. So it's like look here, this is me 24. All right. Like again, I don't even fucking know 
what I was thinking with that. But it, lo it looks like my goatee looks like a Rebel Alliance. Yeah. That's what I'm so saying. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. It looks like a, also a bird flying. A yeah. Yeah. Uh, for freedom. That's what it's for. Yeah. For freedom. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, as you can tell here, it says times attended E3 five wow. at this point, five you times. You are a veteran. I am a veteran. Yeah, I am. I absolutely am a fucking veteran of this shit. Straight to the track. The 21st century killing machine. Burned on the inside of our pivot team. Now I'm not. Alright, so it's day one. We're into the convention center right now. We're trying to find our way there. Okay, look, here's the deal. Shots of this. Alright. These are the floor plans. We scored off the internet. <laughs> this is our plan of our attack. So we can plan our attack on the show. As you can tell, it's pretty, pretty freaking weird. <laughs> By the way, I also had my ear pierced back then. <laughs> if, is... if someone like just took out that clip and like <laughs> that can be like out of context in a terrible way. It could have. It could. It absolutely could. Uh. Anyway, hold on. Uh, asking, am I, are we all still friends? Um, I'm still friends with Mark. Yeah, still good friends with Mark. I haven't talked to Noah, um, since 2020. He actually called into Boulder Talk randomly one night. Uh, way back in the day and then i haven't spoken with jeff really spoken with jeff until since 2012 so i look like doc ock from spider-man 2 it was just because i was growing the hair out and like i combed it back and shit it's just fucking it's terrible wait is wait hold on what mark is the one that is sometimes in the chat right no 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 mark uh no 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 mark from mark yeah, no, no, no. Uh, that Mark doesn't really do internet stuff. Uh, not like for any reason. He's just, you know, he just doesn't yeah. really like. He does his own thing. He's been married, you know, settled down, does all that shit. Like I left that in the past. Yeah, <laughs> Queen Danny, Matt, you're one with the force, and the force is with you, damn straight. Um, all right, here we go. All right, so here we are. We're in the uh, media registration line. Uh, I really hope I have all the credentials that we need. I'm slightly afraid because I forgot to get a letter from the editor. Bad word in there. This is for him. Yeah. Hi there. That's me. Good night. No, no, yeah. Wrong, wrong ID. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. We, we came up last night. We just got everything together last night. So we got here about what time? Like 3 a.m.? Yeah. We got here? No, they're, so, they're, they're registered on site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, where's the driver? <laughs> where's the driver's go. license? Just ask, uh, you need to talk to show management. But anybody that registers on site, so the blue, they get the blue badge holder, and the black is pre registered. So let, let me explain this this process from what it was like. So E3, you could um, you could register online, right? And then when you finish your when you finished your registration, they'd ask you to provide your credentials. So you'd have to send them an article that you've written that's been published in like the last six months. Okay, that's what they wanted you to do. So what I would do when I went to E3 is I would always finish the registration, but I would never submit the credentials until I got there. Mm. And the reason why is you see all those reviews. Yeah. Those are, I wrote all four of those reviews. I wrote them for everybody. Mark, Jeff, and Noah don't have any connection to working on any gaming website, but I knew how to get them in as press if I just provided the documentation. What right. I didn't do is I did not plagiarize any of the articles. I actually went out and I, I wrote everything. So, you know, at least that would be considered legit. Right. And so gamedreams.com, which was the website that we were coming in from, that was a real website that I did work for. Mm -hmm. And I, well, my friends ran and I kind of, I volunteered and shit like that. And so they had to give us a business license to be able to go underneath that. And so they would just give me their business license, even though the website was basically dead. Right. Like they, but they still had the business license. So I could just use that. So it was like, we were like credentialed enough, but at the same time, it was just like, do whatever you fucking want with it. It doesn't matter. And so right. that's why she's kind of frustrated here is because like we printed out like all these reviews. Uh, and then I put everyone's name on it and we came on up and we just handed them to her and whatever. So she's just, kind of, it's like the first day, the reason why you do it, in, why you did it, why you would do it in person is it's much harder to say no to you in person than it is to reject uh, coming in from like an email or something. 
Yeah. And these people are literally there to just like facilitate that. And that is how in 2010, so four years later, we went back to E3, Mark and I did. I actually had a paid gig to cover uh, Star Wars, The Old Republic. It was, oh my God, that gig was easy and it paid so much money. I made like $2,000 in like a day based on what this guy wanted me to do like word count wise he fucking paid a lot of money he was he was just like opening up his website and like he just decided to invest anyway um the, the whole point though is that like they in 2010 this method didn't work initially it did not work they did not allow us to get in and i'm like fuck dude like this, this, is, this is never backfired i got this job on the on the belief that i could get in you know what I mean? Like that was right. the whole point. And so when I, uh, I eventually had to talk my way in and the lady, uh, said only I could go because, uh, Mark, I didn't pre-register Mark. Cause that was kind of a last minute thing for him to come mm -hmm. up. And so Mark and I were just going to like share the badge. He could go in for a little bit. Then I'd go in for a little bit sort of thing. Um, but what happened with that is I go back into where I'm filling out the registration and I look at the guy who's back there and he kind of like overheard some of this stuff. And I said, I just looked at him and said, have you ever had a day that just won't stop fucking you? And he's like, what's going on? And so I tell him like, look here, we've got all these credentials. We, we clearly fit the profile to get on in. Uh, for some reason they're denying us. I, I have got, you know, this is how I'm paying my fucking, my, my rent this month, blah, 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 blah. Right. I just kind of like unload on this guy for a hot second. And he just goes, he just takes my paperwork and he goes, fill out your, your friend's paperwork and I'll print you out a badge. So he gave us a badge. Uh -huh. I talked him into giving us a badge. And uh, and then we stayed. We did like two days of the show. And then it just, it was so, I don't want to say it was boring. But as you'll see, once we get into this, it wasn't what it was. Like it, it just, everything was behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. You know, it, everything became like, ha you know, like hands off type shit. It was just like, it was a trade show where everything was just demoed behind the scenes. And yeah. what you would wait for is somebody to leak something out from like one of the presentations. You know, like, cause that's, that's all you could get. But anyway, right. yeah, let's, let's, let's keep going. We just grabbed these right off the site. Uh, these are all within the last six months. Yeah. Can you help the next person in line? Yeah, those are clip-on chains. Okay, so H Barts is asking, like, why does uh, younger Jarbo look older than current day Jarbo? Well, if you mentioned the smoking, I actually quit smoking a few months after this came out. Um, I stopped smoking uh, Labor Day, 2000, September 4th, 2006. So it's a few months after this. Um, yeah, I do. I, I do look better now than I, I did back then. Um, <laughs> Jarbo lore, yeah, basically. Anyway, um, so yeah, this is us. Uh, this is the opening right here. This is the, the first day. Everyone is running on it. I just wanted to get footage of, of them uh, going in, uh, you know, and everything else. This is, oh, by the way, this is before the PlayStation 3 came out. The PlayStation wow. 3 came out the fall of 2006. So, like, mm -hmm. when you go and you look at this right here, th this fucking, this is the, the Spider-Man 3 font. Yeah. Right? And this is, like, the PlayStation 3, the George Foreman grill. That's what I'm talking about here. Right? Like, this is before the PlayStation 3 even dropped. Like, the PSP was still here. The, like, the Nintendo DS had games. It's... It's fucking, yeah, it's a crazy ass throwback. L 
look look at that bad boy look at that beefy oh. bitch right <laughs> that's look at that sucker man the four is so long ago look at the dual sense look at the not even the dual sense look at the ps3 controller the original controller that's the, crazy. That, the fact that it was just a ps2 controller this is before they add anything it's crazy and it's, and it's just like it looks like a uh ps2 chip like controller that's spray painted like silver. yeah it all it, this looks like so fucking you know yeah it's so funny initial views of E3 so far? I love it. Uh, so far I'm impressed. Geoff. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but I just, I pull it like a camo light and <laughs> flick out my goddamn Zippo. Like, Matt, uh, how, how, how do you feel? Um, I'm the only one who likes it. I have fucking, but it's also like my, my fifth time going or sixth time going or whatever at that point. And everyone else is first. You know, Noah had been once before. He went the year before, okay. uh, or two years before, I think. Um, I talked. I he called me. Him and his friend called me up. Uh, we were at. I was at a party. Um, one of those like it was one of those peripheral like gaming controller joystick fucking things. And uh, the lady th who, who was organizing the the party had got me an entire case of Coronas. And because she found out that was my favorite drink, that's my, that is my favorite beer. And mm -hmm. so she got me a case of Corona and then I get there and she's like, Matt, come here. She's like, I got you this Corona. Your job is to drink all of these. And I'm like on it. So I was fucking yeah. hammered and Noah calls me and he's like, so how do we get into E3? And I'm like, I'll fucking talk you through a bitch. So drunkenly, I explained to them how to fake their way in. And the next day we hung out because they figured out and they came on in. It's, it wasn't hard. It wasn't hard to fake your way into E3. I've gone to 19 San Diego Comic Cons. I've never paid to get in. Never paid to get in. Ever. Me and my friend faked in to get in somewhere. Now I can't remember where. Dude, do you know how many people I got into San Diego Comic Con for free in 2001? <laughs> you want to know? You want to know? 21. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I was just, I was oh. fucking, I was handing out fucking business cards like fucking candy. To my friends, I mean, it's just show them this, you'll get in, you know, um, and What's everything. Crazy else. Is like, it's easy to if you act like you belong somewhere, you can get in. Yeah, you you really can if you act like it. Yeah, uh, it's it's great. All right, let's keep going. There's still some more to this fucking. We get to day two. This is where I think I I think I put water in my hair. Yeah, day two's gonna be good. Looking over the footage from me, uh, what, we, what we filmed yesterday. We got a lot of work ahead of us, but we got a lot of stuff knocked out. Everyone's refreshed, ready to go for this. Look at, look at my ear. The piercing in my ear. The fucking ghost. Jesus Christ, it's cringe. My main goal today is to see the uh, Nintendo Wii. If you want to get a headache, just put that on loop. Yeah. Or yeah that line was so fucking long it took like four and a half hours to get in to see the nintendo wii hello hey what's going on so this is the uh, line for the nintendo wii uh i'm guessing about a three hour wait and it's about 9 20 right now so we'll be here for a while and i remember when the wii came out and played it all <laughs> through oh yeah at christmas I, I okay i was wrong it was five hours five hours but i will say this is one of the coolest booths i've ever seen there we're in the nintendo wii booth now and this is insane uh, everything this console is looking to do is just revolutionary it's, i mean it's so versatile it can do anything the graphics might not be on par with the, the other two contenders in this generation of video gaming but oh my god this machine's way too
Now, I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, say that Mark was wrong in his assessment. I think the Wii was pretty versatile. I, th- I think its sales actual, its records actually kind of back that up. Yeah, I think uh, the Wii was like revolutionary in its sense that it was like it changed the game for how people played games. Yeah, and how interactive they were. It re- it really was, yeah. Uh, hold on, Braun asking, do you think do you think still think you could get into Comic Con twenty twenty four for free now? Yeah, uh, yeah. They they emailed me a little while back saying like I need to re up my credentials, but I've been going for so long, like my name is already in the system. It's perfectly fine. I can get in no problem. Uh, Rational here says you waited five hours just to see the Wii. Well, we were there to capture footage of video games, right? The Wii was the biggest of the big. You have to understand that. Like the Wii being the first time it's having this kind of public exhibition and and everything else, there, it, it was something that Nintendo had never done. I'd been there uh, in 2001 for the GameCube, the year the GameCube came out, and how busy Nintendo was when the GameCube came out. Uh, the Wii was a whole different beast. It, it you know... It it did it it did revolutionize quite a bit and, and mm-hmm. I agree with Jess the Wii got everyone playing oh it got it well, got everyone playing yeah even it, like I the last literally remember Christmas Day like like us playing that at my grandparents' house in Oklahoma and like like even my grandparents were playing like it wasn't just like you know just me and my sister and my mom and dad it was like all of us were playing like the Wii U Sports and other games that were on there as well. Like it had everyone playing. Yeah, it did. I mean, my grandparents were playing it. Um, uh, even even the cruise ship I was just on last year, the last Labor Day, they had uh, they actually busted out the Switch, and they had they were using the games that required the Joy Cons for actual like interaction, mm-hmm. right? So they could have interactive play because they knew that the younger generation liked it, but so does also the older generation. So it's like you know, people like the Switch being uh, an option to play on 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 the on board. So yeah, the Nintendo absolutely did this. Um, Jess here says there were old people who had old folks home playing the Wii. When I went to go visit my grandfather when he moved into uh, an assisted living facility, we were taking a tour around, and they have a, a, a an entertainment room right where they have movies and stuff. But in the center, they had this they had a uh, the Fire Engine Red Mario Wii that had like the four different controllers mm-hmm. that were all fucking red. Yeah. Oh, so I was like, I'm like, I'll, I'm like, I'll just steal these. Like, they're not going to catch me. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're going to catch shit. Um, well, like, they probably think that it might be in one of these person's home. And yeah. The room. Mo here. They you have see. grandparents. My, no, my grandparents have all passed on. This is, this is a long time ago. This video yeah. is 17 years old, dude. The Wii came out 17 years ago or 18 years ago this fall. That's crazy. That's the Wii like, came out like that to give you an idea for just how fucking four, how old that shit is. Years old. Wow. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I was 24. All right. So it's like <laughs> I feel fucking old anyway. OK, so after <laughs> after a long day, the crew uh, found karaoke. I was up all night editing, and I only got a couple hours of sleep. And we came back to do it all again for nine hours, and we're doing it again tomorrow for seven hours. You can see a lot more stuff today. I got my hands on the Wii, which I wanted to, which I'm very impressed with still. And yeah, just all around, good day too. Ooh, it's last day. We're about hey, to you, Jeff. Home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was an exhausting day. It was a very fun day. So also I should point out, we also saw Mass Effect for the first time that day. Uh oh, wow. while we were while we were waiting for the Wii, we kind of broke off, you know, right? To go mm-hmm. do our own thing, come back and whatever. Jeff and I actually found a Bioware um room and they were a meeting room and they were showcasing gameplay and taking questions from journalists about Mass Effect. So we watched about 15, 20 minutes of Mass Effect gameplay. And, uh, and so this is like a whole year and a half before the game even came out. Right. And it looked amazing. And at one point Jeff asks, 
can uh he's like because you know because the thing is this cover shooter right mass effects a cover shooter and so he goes like can you jump and the dev goes no we didn't want it to be that kind of game <laughs> okay he's like okay <laughs> it's just now now let me what i don't talk about here in the day three what i don't mention in this is um and maybe i it was embarrassing for me it's probably why i don't do it but that night day two night we're uh, back at the hotel and um the way the hotel operated was i i had booked it booked this ramada in like koreatown because they said that they had in-room wi-fi okay they had in-room wi-fi and i had brought my whole computer and my crt monitor in order to be able to ingest the footage that we shot on mini dv those of you who don't understand what this is when you shoot on mini dv it, it's you have to ingest it into the computer in a one-to-one -one ratio meaning what you do is you plug the fiber wire the firewire cable into your computer uh, and then the other end into your camera, you bring up like Adobe Premiere 3, which is still what I was using for this. And then you have to go import and you hit play on the camera and record on the computer. And then you just let it run. And that's yeah. how you ingest the footage is you have to record it through Firewire because Firewire can operate at speeds that would allow for the 30 frames a second to work. And then from there, you can go and then chop it up uh, as you need it to be. So when I got back from, uh, from shooting, uh, from all day, we had to go in and we had to ingest everything in a one to one ratio. So if we shot two, three tapes, like two, three hours of footage each, I'd have to go and like find for that night, what I wanted to upload to YouTube. And I have to cut it all out and make it all work. The problem with that though, is that there was no Wi-Fi in the room. They said oh, that there was oh. Wi-Fi in the rooms, that there was a wire, there was a Wi-Fi signal in the room, but it <laughs> wouldn't connect to the internet. This is a common trait that hotels use, by the way. They'll tell you there's Wi-Fi in the room, but the Wi-Fi won't actually work. So you yeah. have to go down to the lobby or whatever the fuck it is. And they did that here. So the lobby was completely full of journalists that were trying to like write their blog posts or upload their pictures or, or whatever, right? And there was one computer that you could use the plug in your USB and like be able to upload to YouTube. So I had to wait until like two, three o'clock in the morning when that goddamn fucking thing was empty. So I could go down there and, and, and upload the footage. But during the process of this, I got to talking to a couple of the guys from a website and they were actually impressed with the video footage that I was shooting. Not that it's the greatest quality, but they were, they were impressed with, with my, my workflow and how Ooh. I was able to figure out how to get the content and how to get it online fast okay and and they were actually talking with me about potentially working with them like they wanted to talk to me about hiring so i was in the lobby that night and i'm talking to uh i'm talking to them and here, here you guys have to understand this right so you have the you have the front door to the hotel then right next to it is the computer then behind it is the whole lobby and then on the other side of it is uh is a karaoke bar okay so it's not the biggest, but it's, it's a long kind of hallway full of people. This is like eight, nine o'clock at night. Okay. I'm just setting the stage. So I am talking with the guy from the, uh, from the website. And again, I don't remember his name. I don't remember the website. I've probably blocked it out for traumatic reasons, of which I'll explain right now. As I'm talking to him, I have one arm on the wall. So I'm resting my arm against it. I'm talking to him. I am. He's sitting, I'm standing, just to give you an idea. Noah comes behind me and he fucking pantses me. Oh my God. But I was in my comfy clothes, meaning like it was loose fitting. So it wasn't just my pants that went down. Oh my. It was my boxers as well. So all of a sudden I'm like, maybe like five inches from this dude's fucking face. And he looks over and he just sees my fucking dick and balls. Now, to be fair, I don't think I'd manscaped in a while. So it just looked like, you know, a fucking hair patch. But that being said, what would you do if that happens? What's your immediate reaction, Caden? 
you bend over, you pull up your pants, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, where I was, what, where, where would, where do you think my ass was facing? The um, lobby. Oh, all the way down to the karaoke bar. Oh my God. So I bent over as fast as I possibly could to whip, pull up my pants. By this point in time, everyone in that lobby just saw your bare very ass. Weird. Saw my bare ass, my taint, my balls, everything. Just, fucking just right there. And then I, I immediately ran to the elevator and I wanted to murder Noah. And how I didn't, I don't even fucking know. He... He did apologize. He he was just trying to get my pants. He didn't think it was going to take the boxers <laughs> down too. Up. He, I mean, like, no, it is one of those things where it's like, I can laugh about it now. It's been 17 years. Right. But it's like, I can laugh about it now. But it's like, in that moment, I was fucking furious because like I was actually talking with these guys about working with them. You know what I mean? Like, I was actually, like, taking skills I was learning while I was in film school uh, at that time. And I was, like, talking with these guys about working with them, doing videography work for them which would have been massive for me at that time. Uh, and he fucked it up and I was pretty pissed off. But I also then at the same time had work to do. We had, I had, you know, I can compartmentalize. So I had to kind of put all that anger and frustration aside. He'd already been kind of a dick the whole week anyway. Like we were all kind of tired of his bullshit. Like mm -hmm. at one point we, okay, before going to E3, we decided to go to Mexico to score booze and cigarettes. So like a week before this trip, we all got in Marky's car and we drove to the border and we went across, we went into the duty free station. We each bought a carton of cigarettes and Noah decided for some reason he wanted to buy a bottle of black vodka, Oh God, black vodka. Yeah. It, it, just because it black doesn't mean it's better. It's pretty shit. So while we get there and keep in mind, I'd also booked a room with two queen size beds, but they ran out of those rooms. So they put four of us in a room with a king size bed mm. and I had to like get cots and shit. Right. But so Noah had gone off like the first night and got fucking drunk, says that he went up to the roof of the hotel and was like dangling his feet off the roof of the hotel and like met these girls up there. None of us believe him. We believe he got drunk and blacked out, but we don't believe he did anything like that. And so the whole time he already been kind of doing his Noah thing, which is just kind of acting up and whatever, and like just being kind of a pain in my ass. And that was kind of like the last straw. Like I was really, really frustrated, but I had I had work to do, so I couldn't really dwell. So yeah, like that's, it's funny, but it's also like all those guys saw all my business. They saw right up Main Street, you know, so that's. They were like, um, maybe not work with this guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, I never heard from them again. I never <laughs> heard from them again. Um. We'd, I never fucking. And then the hotel was like, um, yeah, we're bending these two for life. Yeah. So, well, yeah, they probably were just like, whatever. I was like, holy fucking shit. Anyway, that's what happened with that stuff. So we'll finish the documentary here because it's uh, only a few more minutes left. But yeah, that, I just wanted to give like a clarification of like, or just give you guys an, an idea of how fucked this trip was uh, from the get go. <laughs> I keep a close watch on this heart of mine. About TV3, any words? Uh, yes, yeah, coming up on the final few hours. It's been a long ride so far. It's been a fun ride. We're ready to see what we haven't seen yet, get what we haven't played, what we haven't played. See a lot of really cool games and then go home for another year. Did you notice that okay, real quick there, there was footage of a uh, dead rising. That was the first public display of dead rising. Uh, I think that was the very first footage of dead rising from like a fan on the internet. Cause I put it out there as its own clip and it did surprisingly well. Um, but anyway, that was, yeah, the X, I mean, dude, look at like PlayStation and look at Xbox and just go like that. You can just tell back then they were cooking. Xbox was fucking cooking. 
you know, because uh, they'd already been, uh, this uh, was their first huh? year, yeah. right? They'd already been out. They, the, the Xbox 360 had come out the previous fall. So, uh, you know, this was them in their first full year of E3 showing off the new games a year into the console. So, yeah, a lot of cool stuff there, man. Lots of cool stuff. All right, almost done. We just got some free t-shirts, and all I got to say about this free t-shirt is, once again, IGN has let me down. Why is that? The frickin' media. The media. I had a blast, man. It was probably, probably everything I hoped for and more. I had a great time. Uh, got to see a lot of very neat, innovative things, things that are brand new. Really have me excited about the video gaming industry. Oh yeah, I mean, I had a total blast at E3. Uh, I love to go every year. It's uh, my yearly vacation. I get away from home and away from work. Um, I've seen so many cool things that I have massive bragging rights to for the next year. Uh, I am exhausted beyond all hell. Haven't really slept much this last week, but it's been completely and utterly worth it. And uh, I'm bummed that it's over. Amazing. It's fantastic. I love it. And so I will see you. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic i love it yeah i know fucking short and sweet short and sweet yeah fucking jeff he jesus <laughs> anyway so then we get to the ending by the way i still have that oblivion t-shirt oh no i'm wearing it right now that, that oblivion crazy. t-shirt I, i'm still wearing it. i'm actually wearing it right now it's wow. I, I got that shirt in 05 by the way so it's a fucking 19 year old shirt it's still in my rotation it's just kind of like a crazy. sleep shirt yeah, I went, well, I, what it was is I went to an Oblivion, they had like a 20-minute Oblivion behind-the-scenes look in 05, uh, and that was one of the things we got the t-shirt, um, so, anyway, uh, yeah, so here we go. Yeah, I just went by Jarbo back then in high school, uh, back in college and shit. Anyway, that was just a fucking, uh, that was just a, a hell of a fucking trip, um, you know. And uh, and then the next year, actually, that was when they decided to move E three to Santa Monica, when they did it at the um, like the airport hangar or whatever down there, right? Mm -hmm. They they opted to like move it away from the L A Convention Center, and oh, it was terrible. Yeah. And then, uh, and then in 2008, they went back to the LA Convention Center, but it wasn't the big E3. It wasn't the big show. It was all, it was all just like, you know, meeting rooms and things like that. And then in 2009, they finally went back to like their normal. And that was, I went in 2009 and then I went in 2010 and then I didn't go again until 2013. And that was the last time I went and now oh. it's dead. Now it's gone. Now it's over. Yeah. That's, well, uh, there. Well. Yeah, womp, womp, womp. So there you go, fucking oh God, rash, so rational womp, fucking womp. skeptic. Yeah, just like, there you go. Uh, he wanted, he wanted, he wanted it. Um, but uh, no, I'll, t I'll, sh I'll show you guys the other one here. This is kind of, um, I've shown this one before as well, but uh, it's been a while. Let's see. This is short. This is a two minute short the film that I did. This is the old when I did a lot more cool shit, I think. Well, I don't know if you'd say cool, but it's definitely good. Whatever. That was good content. Yeah. I mean, I kind of miss doing content like that, to be honest with you. So this is a short film I made for the uh, John Woo Stranglehold short film competition. They wanted um, uh, the this is in 2007. They wanted like a two minute action film dedicated to John Woo. So this is me probably throwing every cliche i could think of at the at the wall but i didn't have any doves that's the only thing i really really don't like but you'll recognize some people uh maybe you lost god boy i want to talk to your boss <laughs> he says go to hell
slip and slide. You'll never defeat me, Reverend Dove. I know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I direct, I, I, the idea behind, you couldn't see the quality of shit. Uh, Mark had horns. He had devil horns. Uh, on uh -huh. the kind of the idea was like you know it's like dichotomy right good versus right. evil yeah. um one of the cool things in the very beginning that we uh uh i don't know how well you might be able to see it here uh do you, do you recognize the car to the left oh yeah that's a fucking delorean oh wow that's a delorean yeah that's great that's so cool. the 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 guy who shot this that's his car that was his car so okay. he's like he's like so yeah like um um this is my old house by the way in in, Cal in san diego so like the stucco wall is now gone everything is gone whatever but yeah i mean it was yeah. fun um uh so it's like you know let's see here like the guy right there being held that's my friend robert who actually is now in texas this is my friend dell who's actually now in texas uh what's funny is then you've got you've got um me right there obviously i'd cut my hair but and got rid of the and just had grew the mustache in uh the the blonde guy with the glasses that's my friend brian who sadly passed away a couple years ago but he also had moved to texas everyone uh -huh. seems to be going to fucking texas it's so weird um but it took us literally all day to fucking film this goddamn thing right like all fucking day part of the problem is you can see like it's sunset at this point in time because i had to go to work after this we're filming it all day i had to go to work um what we had though was uh problems because right next to the stucco that we have over here when he runs see where all these trees are right here the lamp right yeah. where that stucco is huge fucking beehive oh, stung God. stung my cinematographer in the eye oh right so it's like we're trying to like shoot around that and he's running past all this and he's jumping all up and over and i just and i went out and i bought all these black t-shirts and i bought these fake fucking guns off ebay and you know the uh you know i mean look the thing is i think it's a fun little short film it's it's stupid but it's fucking fun uh it was fun to make you know um this is this one i hear matt's 30th birthday message i was drunk as shit go ahead yeah i remember this uh for those of you who don't know me you should Awesome times this last year and all the times that are <laughs> yeah these are the two patrols that we passed customs. but also we ah. never we actually uh we actually never drank the uh we never drank it um yeah this is like way old stuff here this was pretty funny the survivalist like this here was a uh a short that i did for this is in my um uh my television production class and we had to do this like we had to do a event um or we had to we had to like write and star in something ourselves you know mm -hmm. and so i opted to to not do it i just was the director on it so i got uh mark here and jeff and they're doing like uh it's a show called grape drink <laughs> i don't know why we called it grape drink but it's just like it's all about zombies and shit i'm not gonna play the whole thing it's 11 minutes um as you can tell i used like my friends and everything um you know old like this fucking stupid hey i had to see movies for cheap i don't even remember oh here's the monsters this is my card game you ever know i made a card game so it's a the it's a dice game oh wow it's a dice game so the idea there is that uh if you roll the dice have the higher card your car it's like war kind of but with dice mm -hmm. and so you want to like stack up and win and whatever um uh, you know whoever wins at the end like whoever has like the most cards left over at the end you add up your points and that's if you that's how you win so my sister oh. is playing and she's losing 
My <laughs> brother is playing and he's winning. It's actually really fun. It's actually that really fun. Like really fun. It's um I made this in 2009 and um I had like an artist draw the cards and we we got them, you know, printed out on cardstock and stuff and then I I cut them all myself. Um, you know, and then I bought mini dice from eBay or whatever and it was like cheap. But it's like uh, I actually, I, uh, one time I, I, I brought a bunch of card decks and played with a bunch of like nine year old kids and they all loved it. Right. But then someone accused me of like, you're teaching children how to play dice games. Like there's no gambling, <laughs> you know, it's just, you play games. It's you're just teaching who's kids to gambling. Yeah. It's like, it could, I could just easily yeah. drop the dice and fucking change it to a game of goddamn war with monsters. But I wanted to like, actually like tell a story with it. Like the monsters actually have a background, they have a story. And everything else that I wanted to uh, uh, really, um, you know, like build into something, like you know, have like a, an animated show of these monsters that I that I came up with and whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, that's I don't even know where any of that stuff is anymore. I've I've lost all of it. Um, the original cards I had printed out, the dice, even my original fucking like files are gone. I, I'd have to remake everything. But it's also so fucking old at this point. Um, all right, so. Uh, Rational had mentioned, have you ever heard of Uncle Secret? Did I ever tell you about Uncle Secret Agent? Have you ever heard of that? No. All right. So Uncle Secret Agent was uh, the idea here was that it's like we Marky plays like the CIA agent. And if you and we have all these weapons on the back wall. <laughs> just, let's see. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. I'm Uncle Secret Agent, and I'm here to guide you through the CIA Correspondence Course and Mixer. Now, over the next few days, as you go through the course, you're going to learn a lot of essential things that will help make you a more effective field agent. Now, a few brief policies and guidelines procedures that you will need to know as a new agent here. Hot lunches are available from Monday through Friday down in the cafeteria. Another important thing to know is if you do come across any kind of intelligence that's essential to the safety of the nation. This does have to be processed through the proper channels before being handed to the essential agency personnel that needs it. Allow up to two weeks for processing. Now, another thing to keep in mind as you are going through your training is if you are cornered by the liberal media in any kind of way and they ask you about any kind of blunder that has come up with the CIA in recent times, just remember this simple rule. It is the FBI's fault. Of course, these are just a few brief things that you'll learn here on this videotape. Your instructor will go through more details with you as you go through the coursework. Now, as a new agent, you may be wondering, what exactly is it that the CIA does? Well, I'm happy you asked. Here at the CIA, we ensure that all intelligence that comes in from around the world is processed and the right people get killed. Of course, we no longer use the word kill. Official vocab guidelines say we need to use the words eliminate or pacify. You'll be learning in the next few weeks exactly how this is done, including, but not limited to, setting up puppet regimes, guerrilla warfares for when your puppet regimes just won't dance, laundering money to fund your guerrilla warfare, introducing <laughs> new drugs to the populace, as well as other essential things that make sure that you keep the greatest nation in the world safe from all those people out there that want to take us down. I'll hand things over now to your instructor, who will guide you through the first few lessons that you'll learn here as a new agent. I'll, of course, be back around anytime you need a little video help. And, of course, if you have any questions, you can always find us on the web at UncleSecretAgent.com, or you can also send in your email inquiries, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. So you go ahead and have a great day now, and thanks again for joining the CIA. We make sure that white America stays safe from all that black <laughs> world out there. So, so for one, I fucking love this. I've always loved this. This was my idea and, and Marky ran with it. When I say like, this is all like him ad-libbing, this is him ad-libbing. Like oh, wow. that was him predominantly ad-libbing. It was, so, this was so much fun to shoot. We did six episodes. The idea was to like, have it be this, um, uh, this, uh, this web series, right? People would like. Would, would you know like a Q&A series sort of thing 
and you know, like we'd have the website and this is again, this is in 2000, oh God, 2009. Like I want to say February 09. Uh, yeah. Cause I, I left for LA a year later and, um, no, we got Mark, uh, is this co- rational here says this content is a plus cinema score he's basically explaining he was from policy. yeah i know he did that's kind of the whole point that's kind of the whole point uh uh legit canon asks your what in bio my bussy my butt pussy jesus christ it's a joke wow i didn't i couldn't think of any other fuck i saw that on twitter i, I got no title for tonight's stream so i'm just gonna call it my bussy uh because if i would have put my pussy in bio i think youtube would have responded negatively but it is what Very. it is uh, so yeah, we did six episodes of this. Um, we shot it all in an afternoon. Um, this was actually at my girlfriend's house. If you've ever seen, if you've ever seen my movie in search of, this is the same garage as the ending, by the way, just as an FYI. Um, so yeah, we, you know, I, again, it's like so stupid shit that I've done I, back when you're, you know, this is like two years after college, but I really wanted to try to like, you know, make something funny and stupid and whatever um you know we've done um i put mark in everything he fucking hated that too but i put him in everything uh here <laughs> like I just, this is um i was at the i went to the uh spike scream scream awards i was on the red carpet uh back in 20 uh 2008 uh we did a show called uh who'd win in a fight and we shot oh. this um you know on green screen at the at the studio and everything um it's i don't know it's kind of stupid whatever i thought it was a fun idea at the time um uh yeah did did you did you did you ever see uh this is so dumb hi when we're not out saving the universe we like to spend time getting to know you. That's right, it's 1-800-SPARK. The only place in the galaxy that these genetically modified Lotharios can get to know you. So, what's it like to kill an elite in the heat of battle? It's sexy. <laughs> Call 1-800-SPARK and you're guaranteed to have a great conversation. You might just meet your soulmate. It sure is beautiful up here. Yes, you are. Thanks, 1-800-SPARTAN. Coming soon, 1-900-GRUNT-LOVE, 18 and older. <laughs> uh, anyway, so so that, I, I just made that like uh, on a whim using Halo 3. And um, I was, uh, believe it or not, like the I, I controlled everything. So I had split screen i think or i had both people play i was using both controllers to move the people like to walk together for that last shot the girl who voiced that i don't remember her name specifically i met her i want to say on like god it probably was craigslist or something right like a dating (laughs) thing um you know and uh what happened was is she was when i called her like this is the weird thing like with mark mark always tried to like girls that liked me but i wasn't really into like he would always try to hit up like it's he's done that a couple times Mm -hmm. and uh this actually he was on a date with her at the time i called her to get ask her to record that i called her through skype on my uh skype on my computer and i had the ability to record skype phone calls and in doing that i was able to get um i got her to record it and then i just kind of slapped that whole thing together in like i think two hours from like recording it to conception to finishing it was just, I was just trying to do something stupid with machinima. And then of course at the end there, one 900 grunt love, you know, it's just stupid fucking crap that, um, uh, that I, that I did way back in the day. Um, do I have the one here? I, okay. So that was, that was that, but there's one I did, um, where, what was it? Um, Oh yeah, here we go. Here we go. So, so, um, ain't it cool? Game, ain't it cool news? Remember, ain't it cool? Oh yeah. Ever, yeah, yeah. It's that th- one of the guys was giving away. Um, uh, he was giving away a Nintendo Wii, it, but you had to tell your greatest. Uh, you had to tell your be- your your best like gaming story. So I talked about SOCOM 
and and mm-hmm. but to, to 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 just just watch this is my submission for the Indie cool news best video game experience ever competition and i'm going to tell you a tale from way back in the old era of the PlayStation 2. Now it was 2003 if my memory serves me correct, which it does. I was playing a couple rounds on SOCOM. We're in Blood Lake, we were knee deep in the shit. Round started and I single handedly eliminated six members of the opposing team without taking a scratch. I can't actually show you this because I didn't have the technology available to me at the time. But I can show you what I created with 8-bit sprites. Enjoy the slaughter. Enjoy the death and the mayhem. Enjoy my greatest video game achievement. So I programmed all of this in like RPG Maker or some shit. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. Why so it's supposed to be, why did that intro like give Jack Black? I think I might have been trying to do that. It's like whatever. So this is me like taking that guy out, that guy out. <laughs> There's another guy over there. And then it's like and <laughs> this is actually kind of a representation about what happened in SOCOM. I did eliminate six people. So I hope you enjoyed that. I killed a lot of people <laughs> as a little girl. It's a dream of mine. <laughs> I've said too much. Well, I'm gonna go back to Halo Three, and you guys have fun. Oh Seriously, get the God. hell out of here! I'm I'm done talking to you. It's so bad, so bad, <laughs> no, it's funny, so it's fucking like, bad. It's like you just watched me as a little girl kill a lot of people. That's a dream of mine. I <laughs> think I spoke too much. I'm just like, <laughs> wow, dude, I. Like you haven't seen this old shit. Uh, this is like old, old crap. Um, I th- I have a pitch here for let me do here. Here we go. Okay, so I'm take this is uh, my plea to Summit to make Breaking Dawn uh, a new movie. Like not just any movie, an actual, honest to god bad film. Oh, by the way, I still have that Mech Assault Two T-shirt too. It fits me way better now. It was so fun. Here's you know you know why I was so chunky here. This is like the fattest I've ever been because this is a year after I quit smoking or oh. like, um, uh, this is no, this is, uh, this is after I quit smoking and I just gained a bunch of weight. Mm-hmm. So it's like, that's one of the reasons why anyway. And, and I'm going to tell my coworker here who's off camera, but I'm gonna tell her all about breaking Dawn and I'm gonna break it down. This is taken from a chud.com report about the book. And it's just so, so funny. Yeah. You gotta hear this. Okay. So, New moon ends, right? And Edward's like, Bella, will you marry me? And she's like, <laughs> okay. Okay, so fast forward to the fourth book, they're married, all right? And then they get married, and they, and then they honeymoon on this small island off the coast of Brazil called like Isle Irma or something, I don't know. Okay. But it's owned by the Cullen family, right? If you can imagine vampires snorkeling and bathing in the sun, <laughs> it effectively happens in the book. No. Yeah, I'm not kidding. This is in the book. Yeah. So, so they get married, and what do married couples do? They have to, you know, they have to kind of seal the deal, right? Yeah. Well, Edward's like, I don't, I don't really want to, you know? What? Because it's the whole Superman, like, woman of Kleenex thing, you know? Like, too what? strong. You know, like, being too strong while having sex. Oh, he doesn't want to hurt her. He doesn't want to hurt her, right? And so he's like, I don't really want to. And she's like, come on. <laughs> come on. And finally, he's like, okay, fine. So they get it on. He knocks her out. What? Edward, Edward fucks her unconscious. Matthew! I'm saying that. I'm saying that. So anyway, <laughs> he screws her unconscious. She wakes up. She's bruised. She comes after round two. And this time he gets her prayers. <laughs> so explain to me. First of all, how can vampires give me these prayers? No, 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 no. Apparently somewhere in the book is mentioned that they can get pregnant somehow. I don't know. But you well, figure, I'll go with that one. But you figure, but there's, but there's a direct reference, I think, like in the first or second book where they talk about breathing. And they, they only choose to breathe because it feels normal, not because they have to, which effectively means that there's no oxygen moving blood around in the body. The heart's not pumping. So if the heart's not pumping, how can there, how can semen be created to impregnate, right? So I'm just saying. Why are you saying 
saying these words? Because it's, it's scientific fact. I'm not going to go more yeah. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So he, he knocks her out. He knocks her out. Real quick, if you guys ever wonder, you guys you remember, you know how I have my train of thoughts when I stream and I yeah. go down these. So this is me from like 2008. All right. Or whatever. Or like, this is me from like back, like, you know, so this is let you know, this is how I've always been. This is not just like some random thing. This is how I've always been. But anyway. So, and the pregnancy is like really quick. This baby what? is growing very fast in her body. So they, they have a fast? Very, like two months, I think is what they say in the book. Like two months and, and she's preggers. But she starts, uh, she starts getting, uh, the baby starts kicking. And the baby kicks so strong, it breaks her ribs. And this is what I want to see. What? I want to see Christian Stewart going like, you know, like biting her lip and pulling her hair while her ribs are being broken internally. I want to see this on a movie so bad. You're not going to show it. I really hope to God they do. Like the unrated director's cut later on, I'd be down with that. But so, so then the baby starts uh, getting, um, getting more developed and goes really fast. And then the baby develops telepathy. And a full adult mind inside the inside the womb. Uh, so then, like the sister Alice can start hearing okay, the baby's thoughts. Okay, that's disturbing because the baby the has to go through birth. Yeah, still. yeah, yeah. You're so, not supposed to remember those things. No, no. So the baby, the baby is telepathically transmitting her thoughts out of the womb. People can hear it. Uh, Are you serious? I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. And it gets better. So then uh, she starts going into labor and, and, and basically everything like that happens. Wait, uh, but there's it, reasons why you shouldn't remember birth. Oh, it probably it's a painful experience or it's a crazy experience. It's like, yeah, it's, it's, like it's like going through Space Mountain at Disneyland. <laughs> you know, it's all black, it's all windy, it's crazy. You get to the end, flash a light, there you go. You're back sitting there going, wow, that was a hell of a ride. I'm just saying that's not, that's wrong. It is wrong, but so she goes into labor and the labor is so violent, it's so crazy, it breaks every bone in her body. Right, and, the, and Edward has to perform what? a C-section. What? A C-section with his teeth. He has to do a C-section? C-section with his teeth. No, C but, no, yeah, yeah. you're lying. Rips <laughs> <laughs> baby out of womb with teeth, right? Oh so then she's God. like, she's broken and she's bleeding. I mean, literally at this point in the book, I, I really want to see her just get beat to shit because that's what she's going to be, oh is literally God. beat to shit. So then they go, okay, now we're going to turn you into a vampire at this point in time. Because she's going to die. Yeah, so now they oh, go and do it. I, at the at like the last possible moment. Oh wait, maybe we should have thought of that beforehand. I don't know. Well, can she be get pregnant if she's an empire? I don't. I don't know. I don't know the logistics of of Stephanie vampires. I call them vampires. So really, uh, as whatever. So then uh, she has the baby, right? And the baby's name is like. Rrr, rrr, rrr. I. <laughs> Can't pronounce like random Missy. I can't pronounce it. Okay. I don't know no one. I've, like I've, never, fairy's name. I've never heard anyone utter the word yeah. and and have it be you know like in actual okay. context. Yeah. So basically, she has the infant and who has this fully developed adult mind, wow. right? Is that um, whole set of teeth too? I don't know. I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know. It's a half vampire, half ba half human baby. But no. <laughs> in comes Wolf Boy. Okay. okay. And he's just like, hey, I heard you had. No, as soon as he sees the baby, he's like, Yo, what's up, baby? How you doing? Nah, -uh. seriously. To the baby? Yeah, to the baby. Because to it's like, baby. he imprints himself on the baby. Which I guess oh is explained God, later on as saying it's a uh, uh, more intense love than what Bella and Edward have for each other is uh, Jacob's in love with this child. He's in love with this infant. So Jacob is going to be. Jacob's in love like, with Yo, I'm going to get up on that when it's old enough, which is like 18 years. No, because it's speed time up. I don't know. I don't know. Oh. I have no idea because you figure if it's a vampire, maybe the vampires wouldn't age or they'd age at a half rate because they're half human, yeah. like bleed. So, I mean, you figure 40 some years and she'd be legal? <laughs> well, how, how werewolves? I don't know. Uh, 17 at this point. I think they age normally. Oh. But the fact is, he comes in and he's just like, it instantly transfers all of his love of Bella to this child, which is very disturbing. That's weird. And then he goes and starts visiting her like every day, you That's know, weird. and starts like, and then they're all cool with it. That's they're, like, very whatever. like pedophile. It's very it pedophile. Like, so then, then like, then, like, like the baby as well. Like he has. It's, I don't even know. I'm just more or less like fucking. Yeah. Yeah. Was this at the theater <laughs> or the drive? This is at the drive-in. This is at the drive-in. That whole storyline is so weird. I just I fucking. <laughs> but the, you explained it so perfectly. Well, I read an article about it. Is just as wild as this because my coworker there, uh, she doesn't, um, uh, she she doesn't like Twilight either. So I just more or less, Jess says here. This reminds me of a guy who goes into full history mode to explain something to his girlfriend. I mean, I think that's every guy, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, I just explain like how fucked up Twilight Breaking Dawn is. And um, it's, fucked up, man. It's, it's so fucked up. It's, it's so, so fucked up. up. I, 
I don't even remember like half of the shit that I said in this. Like, I'm all like, I want to see your beat to shit. I don't even really know what I meant by that. I thought I was just trying, like, in the moment, trying to be like funny, but um, it's Jesus. Yeah, let's just finish it. All that shit goes down, and then the Volteri, who were like the the bad guys in the second movie that you know they did nothing. They show up again because they think that the baby is uh, is this like immortal one, like this like this child the of prophecy, one, the kind, of, kind of, yeah. right? And they show up, and they're just like, we need to kill it. And Bella's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, listen, you guys have got it all wrong. And they're like, no, please it's explain. Genius, but... <laughs> no, they're like, please, they're like, please explain. Yeah. And she's like, no, it's just, it's my daughter. It's absolutely fine. Oh, well, because you said so, we're going to go. That's so, it. Yeah, that's it. So then they leave and then everyone, you know, Bella and Edward go off live happily ever after. The baby's going to get boinked by the werewolf when they're older. I mean, it's like, oh my God. this is the fourth book. And the reason why I'm so excited to see it is because I love watching bad cinema. Okay, they're not going to make it like that. I hope to, I would make they it like that. They would be too graphic. I would make it like that. Listen, all the teeny boppers would freak. Look, I, as I told some teeny boppers the other night that came in to watch New Moon, they need to stop setting them up, themselves up for disappointment with this character because they are the reason why divorce rates are so high. Oh. Because they are in love with this set, their totally like fictionalized character of Edward Cullen and his romanticist, which is nothing more than being a stalker, right, as it's shown through the series. And then you get to the fourth book and it's just like, what is going on? It makes I think no they went too far with the whole C-section thing. I think tearing it out, I want to kind of see that. Like that's like something you'd see on HBO. Would it make if, it cool? If, yeah, if, if those if those vampires, and the reason why I call them vampires is because they go out in the sun, they don't need to drink human blood, and they're generally faggots. Uh, wow! 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 How disavow! <laughs> disavow! I don't ever use that redacted. word. Holy shit! Let's wow! Just redacted. Redacted. Disavow. Uh, but anyway, I was just going off on that shit for a while. Wow. I'm embarrassed by that. That's fucking terrible. Matthew, what are you doing? You're saying Matthew. things you shouldn't say. You're saying things you shouldn't say. I just... <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was not... I never used that fucking word. Uh, that's not a... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Here's one um, uh, we did um, way back in the day. Um, it might be muted now. Oh, no, here we go. And welcome to another exciting adventure with me, your host, Alan Strongbum, Dingo Stalker. We're here in San Diego, California to explore the myth of the mythical midget town of La Jolla. Come on. So, by the way, that's a real myth. That is a real urban legend around San Diego. Wow. That there is a little person village uh, on Mount Soledad, tucked away in La Jolla. Like, you, you have to know where it's at to be able to find it. Like it's legit. I'm not even kidding you when I say it's legitimately uh, something. So you know, uh, it was a different time. Yeah, yeah. I said stupid shit. I say stupid things all the fucking time. Um, but uh, yeah. So this is this is. I made this for um, a class project. That's why we have all the copyrighted music because <laughs> it was just meant to be class projects. And YouTube was way fucking like way more chill back in the day about that kind of stuff. Right. So before we get started today, I thought I'd give you a little bit more background on the creatures that were stalking. Now, these midgets can grow up to be over three feet tall and leap up to 25 feet straight into the air. They've got razor sharp claws and even teeth more dangerous than that. Now, these creatures are very skittish and are usually diurnal. That's why we're out during the day. So we're going to try to find these little creatures and see what we can find out. Right. Now, another thing about these creatures is it does have, like any other animal in the animal kingdom, natural predators that try to come down on it. Right. Their natural predators include the spotted owl, crows, and the Japanese. Right. So it looks like we've stumbled upon some tribal markings of the vicious warrior caste of the midget town. Now, if you look here at these markings, you can clearly make out 
that they do not want us here. It's a warning to fend off predators. Obviously, the word willow means strong but bending. And the rocks obviously represent their weapons that they hurl through the air at us. Right, so right now we are on our way to Mount Soledad, where my good Aboriginal guide friend, Gugel, told me is the location of the mythical midget villa. Now, a little bit more about the legend that goes with this mythical midget villa. It appears that these creatures came here long before the Spanish had walked, originally thought to be the original colonists of the area. But now we know that in fact the midgets were here a couple of years beforehand with little grass huts made mostly out of straw and spit. <laughs> right, so here we are up on Mount Soledad trying to get a bird's eye view of these creatures' natural habitat. Now, these very elusive creatures are very secretive, so we're hoping from up here that we can help pinpoint their location and maybe learn a little bit more about these very secretive creatures by examining their habitat. Right, so we're here on Mount Soledad and I found this girl. Now, what is your name? Danielle Miller. Nice to meet you, Danielle. Now, do you live in this area? Yes. Right, what can you tell me about the mythical midget town of La Jolla? Well, it's right off the main road down here off Mount Soledad, and it's on an unmarked driveway that looks like a regular house, and I know that if you go in there that the little people can chase you with guns, so you'll be scared and run away. Right, so you're saying that these creatures are hostile and very territorial? Yes. Crikey! We're nearby! We've got to go! Right, so I have, I have to explain that, by the way. That girl, that was a real interview. I that was know. a re. That was a re. Like that's when I tell you that this was an actual urban legend around San Diego in two thousand and seven, right? I can tell that she <laughs> was. It. It wasn't like you know some one that you guys like were like okay this is what we're doing. Da, 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 can you say this and this and this? Yeah, <laughs> you can tell that it, like because the way she was giggling between each answers and and like at and at him. Like, it was like, okay, yeah, this is someone that, like, yeah, y'all just, was like, it's crazy, dude, it's crazy, uh, old school Matt is, like, searching for, that's the, I'm directing this, it's Mark, this is Mark, Mark always had the it's, fashion sense in our friendship, I, I don't, like Guy Fieri, <laughs> a little bit like Guy Fieri, yeah, yeah, he did, uh, I, I've done, this isn't me, guys, this isn't me, this is my friend Mark, I'm the one filming, and I'm the one directing this and coming up with the con coming up with the jokes and shit. Mark is very good at ad libbing all this stuff. He's really, really, really funny. So, but uh, no, like my Australian's different than his Australian, but it, it is crikey, you know. But no, it's it's he he did the shit. Uh, you guys look like you came from the band Smash Mouth. Well, we are all stars, okay? So like, shut up. Uh, all right, <laughs> I <laughs> this is such a. Stupid. I showed this in class, by the way. Oh my. <laughs> These were projects. I'm like, thinking, like, like, what's the dumbest project that we had to do in school? Like in middle school, at least. And I'm just like, what is this? No, dude, I did this in college. Like, I did this for credit. You know, this is not like some. I've done stupid shit in middle school, too. Like, you know, we did like, um, uh, a news broadcast once about uh, about mm -hmm. the uh, Mount uh, Vesuvius explosion in Pompeii, mm -hmm. right? And we 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 treated it like it was a news program, uh, and you know, and everything else like to document it. But uh, this was just something I'm like, I need something funny to do a documentary about. I don't want to do it on anything serious. So let's go with this urban legend about a, a, a little people village in La Jolla, because mm -hmm. everyone talked about it as being a real thing. So uh, yeah, let's let's keep going. So now we have confirmation that somewhere in this area, the fabled midget town, in fact, exists. Now we're gonna get back in the combi and head on down the hill and see if we can locate these mythical creatures. Right. So we found this rural driveway, which apparently that is one of the paths to the mythical midget town of La Jolla. Right. So we're hard on these creatures' tails. We're trying to find them here. We're still on Mount Soledad. We have confirmation that they're somewhere in this neighborhood. Let's keep looking. Qu Crikey, C come get a shot of this. This is pornography. As everyone knows, <laughs> midgets are highly addicted to pornographic images. 
that I'm going to leave these out. I'm going to disturb the natural order of things. But that just leads to believe that we are somewhere in their direct vicinity. Come on. So you might be asking yourself, huh? <laughs> Let me explain. Director's commentary. So this is actually, we shot this in 05, not 07. This is in 05. Um, we had recently gone to uh, Las Vegas. And you know how when you go to Vegas, there's all those dudes like handing out them hooker cards? Yeah. So like Mark and I collected a shitload of those when we were there. And I forgot that I had left them in the side pocket of his passenger door for like a couple of months. Mm -hmm. And so when we're driving around Mount Soledad looking for some things to talk about, my thought process was, okay, what can we do to like, you know, what, what do we have that's available to us? And I reach down and I fucking find these cards and I'm like, dude, pull over. We're going to sit there and we're going to spread them around for a hot second. And we're going to say that they're addicted to pornography and we're hot on their trail. And he's like, okay, fine. The reason why he's whispering or he's talking low is because like we were all like right next to someone's house mm -hmm. and we just were like trying to get in and get out before anyone called the cops. <laughs> They're like so, this, these lunatics yeah. <laughs> talking about some little people pornography. Yeah, they're, they're addicted so, to pornography. Like, geez, what is like what the heck? I know, it's so bad. It's so bad. This is twenty two year this is like what, twenty two, uh twenty three year old Matt humor, by the way. It's, I mean I still have the same humor, but it's more refined now. Back then it was very just, you know, whatever. Right, so here we are. Still on Mount Soledad, but now down in the residential area. We're going to be setting a trap here to see if we can capture some of these little friends of ours. Now, I got this old aboriginal trap given to me by my good friend Google and Map Cool West. Now see, it involves simply this, a box with the name of their favorite treat on it. Now, it is very rarely known. The problem is I wrote Twinkie on the box, like facing like downward, like normal. Uh -huh. And so if you notice, it's like if you put it upside down, which we will, the Twinkie is upside down. So the little people will have to uh, put their They have inverted up. eyes, Caden. They have inverted eyes. Okay. Yes. They read upside down. <laughs> yes, they read upside down. They put the, they look straight ahead, but they read upside down. Exactly. So it's a very unique trait. Uh, very, very, very unique trait. Only they have. This Only trait. they have. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that midgets, in fact, subside themselves on high sugar diets, such as Twinkies, like this. Now, a Twinkie to a midget is like a nice steak to us. Irresistible. They can't pass it up. So we're gonna go and set this. The trap is set. Now, <laughs> the bait. They can't pass it up. <laughs> I forgot we did turn it upside down. I don't think we turned it upside down. Right. So now the waiting begins. It's already been about half an hour, and so far no midgets have gone for our trap. But I have faith that eventually one of them will fall for it. Right. It's been over two hours now, and so far there hasn't even been a nip at our trap. But I still have faith that we're gonna get one of these guys here. Wait. Never mind, I thought it was a midget. Turned out it was just a beagle in a sun hat. Okay, so the beagle in a sun hat reference. Um, do you remember Ninten Nintendo Pets or whatever it was on the DS? Um, oh, it's a long time ago. It's like 2005, 2006. He had one, and his, his, his pet was a beagle who wore a sun hat. Oh. So it was like this inside joke between like him and I. That, like uh -huh. no one would ever get unless I explain it, but that was basically like his Nintendo pet sort of thing. All right, anyway, it's been eight hours. I'm getting tired, I'm totally famished. I'm beginning to sober up. I'm beginning to think this is all a myth. What was that? Looks like we've had a visitor on our trap. For some reason, this trap failed. You can tell by the teeth marks on the Twinkie that it was obviously a midget. 
this give me hope that somewhere on this map it wasn't the midget, it was Matt. in fact Matt. the midget tower. That wasn't me who did it. Right. So it turns out the midget that I thought had come and partaken in our trap and eaten half our bay was there. But it turns out that it was just that goddamn beagle in the sun hat again. That beagle, I swear, I'm gonna catch that beagle. Anyway, I'm beginning to think this is a myth. I'm gonna do go go and do some more research. That's that's just what I'm gonna have to do. Right. So it looks like this museum has unearthed a prehistoric midget egg. Now these eggs, unlike other creatures, can house up to two, three, even four midget cubs in a, cubs in a single egg. Which is really amazing. That once they hatch, they come out full size, ready to take on the world. Right, so it turns out that this is in fact just an urban legend spread amongst the locals for their own amusement. So, after five days of searching, come up empty handed. But don't fret, there's always more adventures to be had. I guess we'll just end up having to file this one away with other such myths like Bigfoot, Area 51, and Penile Enlargement programs, which I know I've tried my fair share of. Join us next time as we travel to Kansas in search of the merry old land of Oz. Until then, good day, and see you next time on right here on the Dingo Stalker. <laughs> so, you guys come to Oz too? Cool. We we actually we actually uh shot a sequel to that. Uh we shot it in 2008 or 2009, I think. Mm -hmm. And we actually got him in like full on like cargo shorts and cargo shirt, right? Like in like the foldy hat sort of thing to look more the part. And we shot it on a much nicer camera and uh we went out to a lake and we were trying to find Bigfoot and we just kind of trounced around this like reservoir for a while. And, uh, unfortunately I don't know where any of that footage is. I think it's been lost to time, so I don't have any of it. I never completed it, but, uh, we did shoot it. It just unfortunately never went anywhere else. So yeah, I've, um, like I said, I've, I've, we, I've come up with a lot of dumb, 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 dumb things. Uh, over the years, um, and uh, and and everyone's probably just going like, "Jesus Christ, you're fucking weird in the head," mm. which you know I, I am. What's funny is, uh, so we, well, in uh, what's this? yeah, middle school. This is middle school. We had to do a pro like a project on like history, and you had to like choose like something, history of LA, like something, and I chose history of Hollywood and filmmaking. So I did, I did this whole project. Like, we went to, like, different places and filmed. And then one of my cousins, like, she went in Hollywood and filmed some stuff. And, and like, she edited it together and everything. And I did, submitted the project. And then, like, a year later, it got taken down because we had um, a copyright song in it. I'm like, damn. So all the audio is gone. And I couldn't recover the audio at all. So it just looks dumb like it, that happens <laughs> that that does happen i mean like i'm not looking to make any money off this old shit i think it's like yeah like look even even in search of like the fucking movie itself is you can watch it it's on there it's been you know i looked at it's been seen almost eight thousand times like in search of is actually people have gone to the website and fa either shared the link or whatever eight thousand times i that's that's pretty astonishing to be honest with you um you know uh but anyway yeah there's a lot of ugh, fucking we always end up doing dumb shit i you know we always end up um uh let's see here um okay yeah here we go so this is the this is the unlisted page for for in search of 7500 times 11 years ago not too bad not too bad I mean, like for a shitty ass movie we made in two days, you know, honestly, I feel like this has probably got more views than some shit on Tubi. Probably. I still actually want to try to get this on Tubi. I got to try to find the original files on it. But anyway, I mean, look, I had fun making it. I had fun hanging out with my friends, working on it. You know, it's always a good time uh, and everything else. But let me, did I ever catch any, catch any what? Did we, did we ever catch any little people? No. 
No, because that would be wrong. <laughs> uh, a couple, there are some supers here I need to get to. Uh, anyway, you guys have been, wow, holy shit. Um, okay. Um, all right. So H parts here asks, since I mentioned Beverly Hills cop, do they get better as they go on or no? Um, they're different themes. They're different. They're just different vibes. Like the first Beverly Hills cop is, uh, you know, it's funny. It's, it kind of, it feels more like a comedy than, than anything else. Uh, Beverly Hills cop two is directed by Tony Scott. So it's a lot more atmospheric. Uh, there's less comedy, but it's got a pretty good story. And then number three is kind of like cartoonish because it's takes place at a theme park. Even George Lucas makes a cameo appearance, but I love Beverly Hills Cop 3. I do. Have you ever seen those movies, Caden? You ever watch those? Oh, he's at the way for a second. Uh, but yeah, no, Beverly Hills Cop. Again? Have you ever watched the Beverly Hills Cop movies? I watched the first one. Oh, you got to see the them. sequels. Yeah. Sequels are great. The se second one has got uh, Hugh Hefner makes a, makes a cameo appearance in it. Um, you know, yeah. Uh, and then um, let's see here. Also, H Bar says, will we get Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 when AI gets advanced enough? Yeah, we're well, here's the thing. We're going to get multiple iterations of it. There's already one on. It's You're talking about the 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 um the project Justice League? No, I'm talking about there's an actual I Oh my god, I have to find it. So is that the one? Is that made. oh, is that the shitty one with like Henry Cavill? Like they did like the it's, the lip sync stuff. Well, no, it's oh, okay. Yeah, it's, if you can find it, let me know. Um, yeah, but but as AI progresses, yes, yeah, we're gonna get. What I mean by that is by multiple iterations. Is that like as soon as the next tool comes around that they're gonna be able to use, they'll use it, and as soon as that's you know another tool comes along that's even better, they'll use that, and it will eventually morph itself into something that hell even Zack Snyder himself might do you know like I could see Zack Snyder on his own shooting you know making an AI film to finish out his arc and then just uploading it and being like oh I'm a random fan sort of thing I could see Zack doing that you know just as like the you know but then again at the same time with with uh Dan Lin taking over uh Netflix and um you know Warner Brothers movie you know filming Superman Legacy right now uh, they, they're moving away from all that shit and it's just, it's over. It's, it's, well, it's Jover. Uh, yeah. Uh, the way that, uh, that, um, damn, who said this? I think it was the person that's above Dan Lin now was like saying how they like, they want to make less, like make less movies, uh, because they make like 30 to 40 a year. And like, you know, only half of those. Well, no, they're like, making, they're making this the last couple of years. They've released one a week. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Yeah. I, I know that they want to, I know that they want to, like, uh, to 15, slow it down. Like yeah. to 15 to 20 only. So it's like, you know, they're going to like really Qual quality over make, quantity sort of thing. Yeah. And to make sure that like, okay, these fifth, like half of these 15 have to be like our top movies of the year, you know? Um, well, but again, it's, uh, it's also the idea there is that they, I do think they're going to start making their way towards theatrical. Um, I, I do think that uh, rebel moon was supposed to go theatrical. There's no other reason to have a PG 13 cut of the film. Um, mm -hmm. Unless you're trying to artificially recreate the Snyder cut movement, which they, to extent they kind of were, but at the same time, you've also um, got to remember that they were, uh, that I think they were wanting to go theatrical, but then the writer's strike kind of fucked it up and the actor's strike because they couldn't promote it, right? They just couldn't have the actors promote it. Why spend all that money if they're not going to be able to promote it, that kind of thing. So um, that's my take on it, at least. Uh, either way, though, uh, uh, you know, look, I'd rather they're, I'd rather that they do um, you well, was, uh, more so, high quality stuff. So this is what, okay, this is what I found. This is what it was, not, Okay, just um, yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. This is what it wants. I hey, have AI to GPT to create a Snyder's Justice League sequel. Let's see what it comes up with. In a distant universe where the forces of good and evil were in constant conflict, a powerful being known as Darkseid had unleashed his wrath upon the galaxy. He sought to conquer every planet in his path, and nothing could stand in his way. The only hope for the galaxy was a team of heroes known as the Justice League. 
The Justice League consisted of some of the most powerful beings in the galaxy, including Batman, The Flash, Cyborg, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Together, they fought against the forces of evil, always coming out on top. But when Darkseid killed Lois Lane, the love of Superman's life, everything changed. Superman's will was shattered, and he was mercilessly brainwashed by the all-powerful anti-life equation. The world had never seen a threat as dangerous as a villainous Superman. It was then that a ragtag Justice League was hastily assembled, consisting of Batman, The Flash, Cyborg, Mira, Deathstroke, and even the infamous Joker. They knew they had to act quickly to save the galaxy from Darkseid's grasp. The team was aware that the only way to reverse the catastrophic effects of Lois' death was to send the Flash back in time. However, to achieve this, they required another mother box, a powerful piece of cosmic technology from Darkseid's planet, Apocalypse, to fuel the time travel device. With Superman as their main adversary, the team embarked on a perilous mission to evade his watchful eye, infiltrate Darkseid's stronghold, and pilfer the mother box from its heavily guarded location. With their unique set of skills, the Joker and Deathstroke were able to acquire the much-needed kryptonite. However, they still had to infiltrate another location and activate a portal to Darkseid's world. As they journeyed towards their destination, they encountered numerous obstacles, including battling Darkseid's minions, avoiding deadly traps, and engaging in fierce combat against hordes of enemies. Nonetheless, with Batman's tactical mind and Deathstroke's exceptional fighting abilities, the team was able to overcome each obstacle that came their way. Finally, they reached Darkseid's stronghold, a massive fortress built into the side of a mountain. The team snuck in undetected, and with Cyborg's hacking skills, they were able to locate the Mother Box. But as they were about to make their escape, they were ambushed by Darkseid himself. Despite their valiant efforts, the team was no match for Darkseid's overwhelming power. In a brutal battle, Deathstroke, Mira, and Cyborg were all knocked out, leaving only Batman, the Joker, and the Flash to face the villainous Conqueror. Batman knew that he had to act fast, so he made the ultimate sacrifice by engaging Darkseid in a one-on-one -on -one battle, buying time for the Joker to operate the time travel device and the Flash to travel back in time to save Lois. In the past, Batman also made a courageous sacrifice, giving his life to rescue Lois from Darkseid's clutches. With the mission successfully completed, the Flash returned to the present, where they found that Superman had been cured of the anti-life equation, and had returned to his former self. The stage was now set for the ultimate showdown with Darkseid, and the newly reunited Justice League was ready to face him head-on. In the end, the Justice League emerged victorious. They defeated Darkseid, saving the galaxy from his tyranny. The team had come a long way, and they had faced many challenges, but together, they had proven that anything was possible. They had saved the galaxy, and in doing so, they had become legends. Okay, listen, I'm not, that was actually pretty good. Yeah, that was good. Like, that was serviceable. Like, with a good script, that's a good overview. With a good script, yeah, that could easily be, like, a three-part movie, right? I mean, like, part two, but, like, part two could end with them saving Superman, and then part three could be, like, them getting ready to fight Darkseid or whatever. Either way, that was pretty good. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, uh, again, like, as I've said in the, in the intro, artificial intelligence gooning, um, but, uh, cool. All right. A couple more super skit here. Well, thank you for that. That was actually pretty good. Uh, Jess for five says, speaking of misspelling, what about that Willie's chocolate factory experience? So many things have come out. I need to do a deep dive research on it. Um, because That's yeah, great. there's a lot there. There's a lot there. Uh, uh, did you see today that there's already like a movie, like there was reports of a movie yeah. already being made, but it almost had like nothing to do with the overall story. It was like some horror film idea and it's, it's all like, like, it's like the origin of the unknown. Whatever. I know. Well, the, I know the unknown, right? Here's the thing with that though. Whoever wrote that, whoever, whoever was behind writing the script that created the unknown, they own the copyright for that. You know, like they own the copyright. So it's like, if people start making unknown you know stuff it's going to end up being a thing but either way uh, maybe i should do that maybe maybe i should fucking like have gpt write willy wonka versus the unknown and then and then ai it whatever uh but thank you uh no oh, queen already got to that one uh, command unit here for five thank you says gary oldman has publicly f uh, filmed has been publicly filmed visiting warhammer world the last time that happened was with henry cavill uh, he's a big 40k fan, so this could be nothing. I mean, uh, well, Gary Oldman could also possibly end up being in a, in a Warhammer thing. If he's a big fan, 
Yeah. And there's a lot of people who like Warhammer. And to see of Cavill trying to is no, I think Cavill's name is going to bring a lot of people in. Yeah. To be honest with you, I think a lot of people are going to be into it because it's of that. Cavill and Amazon, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Cavill's in charge of it. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that's going to be, I have a feeling with Cavill being in charge, we're going to get something we haven't really seen before. And when, when it comes to adaptations, because like, okay, like as much like, you know, like Lord of the Rings, Return of the King now is 20 years old, right? Um, and it, it's such a great fucking movie. They're all great. Even the Hobbit movies are great. Like, you know, they're not perfect, but they're, but they're still marginally great. But mm -hmm. those movies are adaptations of beloved literature and, and adaptations in the, in and of themselves are very difficult to do because these adaptations are like, again, it's going to be the person behind it has to find a way to adapt it. That's not only going to be, uh, entertaining to the core audience, but also be, uh, engaging and you know um accessible to the new audience and that's a very fine line to walk um lord of the rings did a really good job with that even though they they removed and they altered some very serious things right because back then people were upset hey no tom bombadil why is arwen now a badass right there was there was complaints about arwen uh being more you know com um competitive or not competitive um competent in battle you know what i mean like the scene where she saves frodo from the ring wraith like that's a great fucking scene mm -hmm. you know but that never happened in the book i don't think so it's like people were complaining about it uh but it's like henry cavill is going to be able to approach warhammer from the perspective of not only being like a lifelong fan but i think he's going to understand after working in these different genres that if he plays true to what the core idea of warhammer 40k is it will be accessible to people that are coming on in to an extent. What I mean is like when you've got people that don't know about the lore, but they go and they seek out the lore, you know, it's like H Barts and I, after each episode of Lord of the Rings, the Rings of power, I, I haven't read the, the shit that it's based on, but he has. Right. And so, yeah, they pepper in, like they pepper in some references to the movies or, or elements of the story that are embedded in pop culture. And, and then those were pretty cool moments that I got as a person who loves the movies, knows the general idea of everything, but is not a diehard fan like H Barts is. Whereas H Barts would be like, okay, this, 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 and this, this all means this. And here's why this is important. So we would talk about it after the fact. And he would basically take me through the episode of what, of what the context of it was, right? Of what the canon of it was. And, you know, and I'm telling you, if, if H Bars didn't like it, he would tell me he wouldn't be excited for it. Right. He, he trust me, he'll message me or like, I'll, I'll get like a historical fact wrong or something. He'll DM me like the next day after I, if he's at work, he's like, I was listening to the stream and you got this wrong here. Let me correct you. Right. right. The fucker loves to correct me. <laughs> Shit. But I mean, so I, but I trust him when he's telling me these things because I know how he feels about this kind of stuff. And that's why I feel like if Henry Cavill can bring that kind of love and make Warhammer uh, true to itself while also being accessible, it's a tight tight rope to walk, but it can be done. Yeah. And and I am ex I'm excited for that. So yeah, if Gary Oldman's in, by the way, let's fucking go. Also, Command Unit here for five, thank you. Says also Games Workshop Warhammer IP owners have made a deal with Microsoft. Sadly, they own Call of Duty now after buying Activision. Well, I did see that Bolt Gun uh, is now available on Xbox Games Pass, and I hear a lot of great things about Bolt Gun. So I'm going to need to go and give that a, a check out. Um, but, uh, I mean, look, they, look, if, we, you know, I think we could get, you know, there's a ton of fucking, there's a ton of Warhammer games. You know, Space Marine 2 is coming out this year. So it's entirely possible Space Marine 2 is going to end up, you know, getting um, uh, getting a fair amount, you know, of uh, maybe some Games Pass when, love, right? I wonder mm -hmm. when we will hear updates on the Cavill Warhammer stuff. Uh, I'm going to assume that it's probably going to happen um, Comic-Con, I would think. Comic-Con yeah. seems to make a lot of sense. Or if there happens to be a... Um, like any kind of Warhammer event around that time. I don't know, but we'll have to wait and see. 
Also, command unit here for uh, five. Thank you. Right wing conspiracies, schizo sounds, left wing conspiracies. The CIA did this. The CIA, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, there's there's left wing conspiracies about like, you know, the their stuff, but it's nowhere near as crazy as right wing conspiracies. I think we can all mm-hmm. agree on that at this point. Yeah. Um, also, uh, wow, I've been on for fucking almost three hours. Holy shit. Wow. I didn't even realize. This has been a fun conversation. I going back through my own fucking memory lane shit. Going back, going back on memory lane is just so fun, and like, be like, oh damn, like I said this, or oh damn, like, oh yeah, I no, this. I definitely, I didn't realize, like, I was like, oh vampires, like, I do Efsler, that's that's ooh, that's 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 cool. oof, that's a big oof for me. Like, I'm embarrassed. I have not even like secondhand embarrassed on that one. Um, it's uh, it's very embarrassing because that's not the kind of shit that I say um anyway um one of the things that thought was interesting today just i i know i need to i keep thinking like i keep trying to like i don't know figure out like how i you know do i want to do like hollywood after dark but do it like earlier in the day you know because mm-hmm. like i get home and i could talk about stuff in the morning that's fine you know i got a little bit of time before my kid gets off of school my my older kid but say like tomorrow for example I've got to take the youngest to school, uh, bring her home, you know, and then I got to, then we have to drive because I'm volunteering at this nonprofit event, right? It's a fundraiser, but it's a live stream event. So like, it doesn't happen until like May, but they want us to go up like early and do a, do a, a test to, to like test everything out to make sure that like everything is up to par and i and i get that and i respect that to be honest with you because it's like you do the tests like in april i don't know why they want us to do it now i mean like that I, seems like something you do like sure it, but it's i'm not being paid so i'm like if we need to get equipment are they going to fund equipment am i going to be able right. to like put in an order and be like okay here's what i need because if if that's the case i could we can up our we can up our fucking shit uh absolutely but i'm going to need I'm going to need some money if you want this. If you want me to do this on my own, I can do this on my own well enough. Uh, but there's going to be limitations like a, to, to what I can yeah. do. You know, it's you it's like... Give me a budget. Yeah. Give me that money for that budget. Yeah. yeah. Because what they're doing is like, I have to figure out how to have like wireless camera systems going into um, going into a streaming environment having at least two at the very, I mean, bare minimum one camera being wireless with audio capabilities uh, Mm -hmm. that I can, uh, that I can, that I can use, that I can live stream. They want me to use StreamYard, which is fine. Uh, I'm going to have to do, you know, uh, route it, everything through the modem uh, to make sure we have a strong enough signal to be able to to do this. But then I got to figure out how do I have, roving cameras when it comes to uh stream yard right you can use your phone which is what i did last time yeah but the problem though is you had two phones simultaneously trying to broadcast uh through stream yard uh at a house and i think the the lady whose house it was her son was like a teenager i think he was like either watching netflix or something because like i started noticing like connection drop-offs and shit but then again, we're in a place where I don't have like cell service, like there's no cell service out there. So I'm completely reliant on the Wi-Fi. And, you know, they're 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 the people who fundraise, who who donate, they loved th- what we did last time. Like they really loved it. Um, and they thought it was really interactive and they really enjoyed uh, everything because, because what I did is I gave my my phone or my girlfriend had her phone, the other girl from the nonprofit had her phone. They both logged into StreamYard and I was using them as the cameras, right? And then, mm-hmm. so what I'm doing is I'm back at my laptop. I'm watching this. I'm kind of like, they're doing their show. They're just, the people are the, from the nonprofit, they're doing their presentation. All I'm doing is I'm back at the laptop and I am listening and I'm watching and I'm just moving all the scenes around and I'm just like bringing them up, bringing them down, you know, showing the stuff when they start talking about donations and what they need. I have like the website up ready to go. Basically like a technical director of a news program. And I'll tell you this, I fucking loved doing it. I loved doing it. I thought it was so cool to do. 
And I'm thinking like, they want me to do it again, but they want the quality to be a little bit better, which I completely understand. We had some issues with that. And I'm like, again, I'm going to need a fucking budget if you guys want this shit. You know, like, it's just, it's hard. It's very difficult. Like, you know, when you get into, when you start working with the nonprofit spaces, they're really good people, really, really good people to work with. Uh, this group I really like. And, but it's like, how do you go to them and be like, I'm going to need like $2,500 to be able to accomplish what you guys need. Right. You know, I'm going to be, I'm going to need. Like, I'm going to need some money. I'm going to need some money. Like, I'm going to need some money. Like, money, money, not just some yeah. money. Like money, 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 yeah, you know, to get this equipment. Like, <laughs> for real. I'm going to have to wait and see on that one. Um. So, anyway, let me see here. Uh, It sounds like J.J. Abrams narrating that, narrating which one? I'm kind of behind the, on that. I think he was stuck with the Justice League AI. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Melanie Mac says it all the time. Yeah, but I'm not Melanie Mac. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> Melanie Mac. You know what I mean? Like you know what I mean on that one. Like it's, I'm just not Melanie Mac. Um. I, anyway, yeah. So I'm. That's what what I got to do tomorrow. And then it's like finding the time. My God, work. I'm like they, when they when they up me to 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 four days. Uh, I was like, all right, cool, man. You know, like, and then I did like damn near forty hours in four days. And I'm like, fuck, I'm tired. <laughs> I don't want to do shit. I don't want to do nothing, man. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's always a constant grind. And then, uh, did you see that I bought? I told you that I bought that teleprompter. No. All right. So I bought the Elgato teleprompter. Have you seen this thing? Elgato. The Elgato tele. Yeah, El Elgato, <laughs> the cat prompter. The cat. Uh, let me show you this. So the Elgato prompter. Oh, that, yeah, I, what's funny is like at the, stu at the studio that I work at has one of these. Yeah, I just uh, I just got it in the other day, and I was I, I was uh, well. What I the reason why I I I I it didn't cost me two hundred eighty. There was I found a coupon, whatever. But uh, it's got the screen. Mm -hmm. It's got the built-in screen, and it just plugs right into the computer and acts as a third monitor. It's like really, it's really yeah. nice. And what's, anyway, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just like saying like, like what's crazy is like now thinking about like we had this and like we we're doing like, we we're shooting for like one of our, uh, like one of our podcasts and like one of the uh, talent needed like, um, like the teleprompter script. I'm like, we had this, but we were using like a huge, like, not like a huge, but we we're using like a similar size, like computer, like, t and, pro uh, like monitor i'm like we could have just used this oh my god just something that came out to my mind oh yeah. yeah it's uh no it's it's pretty cool i like i was gonna return i got so frustrated with it last night right i got so fucking frustrated with it because i was trying to like get the like lighting to work and whatever to do what i needed mm -hmm. it to do and it just looked like shit and it was just driving me up the fucking wall so i dismantled everything and i put it back in the box and then i set up a fucking uh return right I fucking went to Elgato. I'm like, I'll return it. I was so, that's how frustrated I was last night. Then today I got home and I'm like, ah, let me, I think I acted too rash. I think I was just frustrated and I got mad. So like, let me try it again. And so I reset it up again, played with it a little bit. And I'm like, you know what? I was actually able to like do a TikTok or um, tonight with it. And it, I, it worked out quite well. I'm like, all right, I'm going to keep it. I've already paid for it. I've already allotted the cash. It's fine. I use tip money to pay for it. It's like, it's good. It's fine. I'm like, I want to do more with like content that is, um, that is informative. You know what I mean? Like that is like essayist content that I can, I can do. And it's like having and being on camera because people do respond more to being on camera. They do. They just, they just fucking do. Um, even as much as I hate being on camera, people do respond to it more. So it's like, you know, certain things mm -hmm. like that, but either way, I mean, it's a cool little thing. And also like, if anything, if you're just having a secondary monitor, you know, or third, in my case, a third monitor, so I can just throw whatever I want up there mm -hmm. and then just, I can put like a YouTube video up there and just like have it, watch it while I'm fucking working on something, you know, or, or whatever. So that's probably also helpful for like, um, 
like live commentary on things you can yeah you can actually plug it into your twitch chat and like have it up there on the screen uh so when you're talking to people like you can see it i could do the same thing like i could put like a window of the chat or whatever mm -hmm. you know and like you have it up there and stuff like that but it, it doesn't really matter so much because at least over you know here like i can i can highlight shifty gizm and and that brings it up for people to see right. so but i mean either way it's um yeah it's pretty cool um i want to use it and then also i had spent um i bought this uh the, I, I bought a subscription to camtasia's audiate which is that's like an uh what they do is it transcribes uh, it transcribes the audio and then it gives you the transcript and then you can just edit the transcript you can just edit the audio like like you can cut out the 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 flubs or the dead air or whatever mm -hmm. and then have it sync right to the video edit so it actually makes editing like so much faster so I was like, I was like, all right, cool. I'm just bought, you know, paid some money. I've been doing pretty good recently. You know, the work's mm -hmm. been doing pretty good. So I'm like, all right, let me let me kind of up my game a little bit. And I, I just got to get over certain fucking hangups of my own mm -hmm. and put out some content. And I think, um, I think uh, that would be a lot of fun. I don't know. I, I kind of want to like, I kind of want to do more. I just, you know, this channel won't be fucking revived. Obviously this channel's fucking dead. I'm just kind of bleeding it till it's dry and that's fine with me. But at the same time, it's like, I wouldn't mind like, you know, doing some more stuff that has a bit more creativity involved or, or, you know, upping my game a little bit in a few areas. I don't know. It's just like YouTube, like I, I'm talking to so many YouTubers behind the scenes about how like they're quitting. Like they all fucking hate YouTube shorts has like killed their channels because yeah. YouTube's been prioritizing that so much. And they're like, you know, all they do is like sponsored content. But even that's like drying up, you know, like, oh, I talked to one guy today and he's like, I was making 80 grand a year. And then last year it dropped to 40 grand. And then this year I'm looking at like probably 20 grand because all he does is content when sponsors call in. Right. And then it's like, but the sponsors are going to be like either Raycon or Raid Shadow Legends or a VPN of some kind, because they're generally the ones that operate in this commentary space. And even then it's like, you know those I'll, okay so i kind of want to touch upon that for the last little bit here three hours in but have you heard about this whole james summerton thing the what okay so <laughs> uh a uh, couple things to note about this one right so for one james summerton is or was he might be dead we don't know um he might have killed himself today we don't know that's kind of what's going on right now but what? he, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he was, so he's a, a queer YouTuber who like does these long form video essays that are about, you know, like queerness and media and whatever, whatever. Okay. And he does it like very stylistically and he's just kind of a smug prick. Like if you look at the guy, you think he's, uh, I'll bring up a picture, right? Like I'm not trying to like you oh, know, poison okay. the well here, um, you know? but like he he just he kind of just looks like he gives energy of smug a prick, prick. total yeah. smug ass prick like he just looks like it right and i and i and i'm not trying to like look dude i i i'm i'm a chunky boy myself i get all that shit. but you know why he has the microphone right there in front of him because because he's trying to hide that the, the like the big neck the jelly neck sort of thing yeah and like i get it i understand but like that's why he wears like the the turtleneck right up there to hide the neck, you know. But look at him here; he looks fine. You know, just dude, so fucking just Kenneth him. Foster said his S note was plagiarized too. He, every well, yeah, everyone like it doesn't matter. Everyone's gonna say that he's that he plagiarized, right? Mm -hmm. For one, I don't know why he's rocking a Tintin haircut. It doesn't work for you, bro. Stop it. <laughs> It just it just makes you look like that hair that it's combed over and it's filled with cum. I'm just gonna say this, no. The funny thing is like his look is giving um uh Elizabeth Holmes. A little bit, like, I guess. I, I just like it looks like a fucking look. eraser or a troll. You know what I mean? It looks yeah. like a troll that's like recovered from chemotherapy and is just growing it back out again. But either way, <laughs> either way. This is this is this is James. Okay, so James, yeah, was, you know, he's a plagiarist. Okay, basically, um, and uh, his suicide note was plagiarized. Do you have proof of that, Kenneth? Because I don't know if that's the case or not. 
But anyway, H. Bomber guy put out that plagiarism video back at the end of last year, right? The one that blew the fuck up. Yeah. And my interpretation of all that shit was that there were two main targets of that video. The, the two main targets were James Summerton and Illuminati. And as far as I understand it, they both suck, right? Illuminati, I have at least personal experience with, like way back when my controversy happened, um, I was talking to her around that time and I was, I was in a call with her and like Tommy C and Nick DiOrio and a few other people, uh, you know, and she was like, oh, well, I'll teach you how to do Reddit content and you can like, you know, move away from commentary and get into Reddit content. And I was like, okay, cool. Thank you. And so I hit her up about a week later to ask her for the advice. And then she tells me, oh, you know, YouTube hates Reddit content now. Don't do it. And you know what she continues to do? Reddit, Reddit content. content all these years later. Anyway, whatever, man, whatever. What it was is she was just, she's fearful of people croaching on her space, you know, because YouTubers will get like that when you talk about it, talk about something and then like it blows up or something gets big and then everybody does it. And you're just, you're fearful of of everyone taking over for, you know, getting more views than you and shit, whatever, whatever. Um, but I feel like his video, that four hour plagiarism video had a lot to do with just those two people were the primary targets. Illuminati's in her own shit. Like there's lawsuits and there's fucking all sorts of crap going on with her, but Summerton got hit. And the reason why Summerton took the biggest hit was because people just genuinely didn't like him. And the people who didn't like him got very, very, very vocal about that. It's like when I had my shit go down, people crawled out of the woodwork that I have like not heard from from years or in many cases never heard of at all who claimed all of this shit about me that was just not true because I'm like, I don't fucking know you. I've never interacted with you. One guy was going around fucking mundane mad is, is, is flagged all my videos. He's DMC at all my videos. And I'm all like, no, I didn't dude. The fuck? Like, I don't know you. I'm trying to like, I'm trying to figure all this out as it's happening. And everyone is out there just fucking, there's all this chaos. And I think there were bad faith actors that were causing a lot of the chaos. But in this particular situation, Summerton like put out an apology video. Uh, then he deleted that apology video. And then he put out another apology video and then uh, he put out the suicide note. And then the, apparently that other apology video got deleted as well. I don't quite know. But the, the last video he put out, you know, people are saying like he's faking. He's just, you know, he's just mining for sympathy, all this kind of shit. And it's so difficult. It's so difficult to determine whether or not that's true. You know what I mean? And I know people out there are just going to be like, oh, you're just a fucking like, you know, you're just a fucking bleeding heart liberal over this blah, blah, blah. He's a bad guy. But you have to look at it from my perspective. My perspective is I don't know. Okay. And I, cause here's the thing. People lie. A lot of people, people who I thought were my friends lied about me. They just made shit up out of whole fucking cloth or tossed me to the curb because they wanted to protect their image, and not be associated with someone damaged. All right. So like, I understand what people do, what these content farmers do in these situations, like the people who rush to Kiwi farms and start taking Kiwi farms at face fucking value. Kiwi farms is full of trolls. Sometimes they're funny. Sometimes they're good at data collection, but when they get into the weeds in regards to their opinion and someone doesn't understand that. It's like someone who reads someone's Encyclopedia Dramatica page and looks at the hyperbole as being fact, or I don't know, yeah. the Wikitubia page, which can be written by anybody. And, and there's no fucking journalistic ethics that go into fucking Wikitubia. So you can write whatever the fuck you want. That's well, how I'm looking like at it. People, there's certain people who, uh, feed off of people's media illiteracy. Yeah. Like, and pe like, because like, it's just, I don't know. It's just so weird. Like, I don't know how you can do that. Like, how do you think, how do you feel good about that? That you just made people feel like who, who obviously need help, like actually learning about factual things, but then you are intentionally misleading these people. The like, thing I is, though, but I don't know how many people do it because, like, they see other people talking about it that have, like, larger followings, so they would assume. In many instances, a lot of it, from what I remember seeing way back in the day, 
was you would have someone who has a larger following say something and then it becomes a game of telephone but, but because so many people view sub counts as being like as being like the basis for the legitimacy of that person because you'll yeah. you'll say something and then someone will come back with yeah well x person said this and they've got way more subs than you and then i'm like what the fuck does that have to do with the price of tea in china like there's right. this one guy writing a fucking book about Gamergate. He's been fucking hounding me for weeks to like fucking talk to him. And then when I talked about the Geeks and Gamers community subreddit being taken down and the guy who posted the thing had posted in some other kind of sussy shit and I showed receipts, this guy's out there going like, well, fucking Monday Matt called this guy a pedophile. I never fucking called that guy a pedophile, <laughs> right? I would never call somebody a fucking pedophile that I don't have actual proof as a pedophile. Do you know why I won't ever do that, Gaden? Because people have done that to me. Right. And I'm not a pedophile. And the fact that I have to fucking say that is ridiculous. So no, I'm not going to sit there and accuse somebody of being a pedophile. Now, if you're posting some sussy ass shit, some sussy ass shit, that's it. I'll show the, I'll show the receipts as best I can, but I'm not going to sit there and like hyperbolize over things that I can't, you know, oh, look, if I'm calling out conservatives, that's more of my liberal bias, but also I'm correct. It, but when it comes to like actually individual people, I do try to provide as many receipts as possible. This guy's just fucking dumb is really what it boils down to and shit. But anyway, it's when I'm talking about the Summerton thing, okay. If, if James Summerton is dead, if he killed himself, and I don't want him to have killed himself, I really don't. If he is dead, the YouTube commentary space is going to fucking implode. Because if you have got a situation with a large creator who, yes, was called out for his own dumb shit stuff and everyone dogpiled and dogpiled and dogpiled and he just lost himself mentally and then he killed himself as a result of the bullying that came from that. And that's what it is. Criticism that goes beyond just like you shouldn't do that shit is pr pretty much bullying. Digging into somebody's fucking history and using it against them. That's bullying. It is. We can yeah. call it that. We're adults. We can make that comment. I'm not saying don't criticize somebody for what they have done. Criticism for what they've done, but what they did fucking like, or what their family members did 15 fucking years ago doesn't mean shit to that. But people try to pile on as much as possible in order to make it seem as, you know, worse than what it is because they make so much fucking money. What we're going to see is a big sweep. And, and YouTube is going to fucking, it's going to react to this. This is not, some small unknown creator that sadly took their own life. This is a big creator in a big scandal who was dogpiled on and then took their own life. Mm -hmm. Right. And so who's going to pay, who is going to be optically blamed for that? And I said, optically blamed is going to be H bomber guy. More importantly, H bomber guys audience and his audience is already preparing for that if you go to the h bomber guy subreddit you will find people telling him oh no 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 harris don't worry you did nothing wrong this is nothing about you you don't don't beat yourself up over this this is nothing to do with you we stand by you if you are already having your audience run to you before confirmation of death is confirmed and trying to shield you from any kind of criticism on that front you know you are fucked oh yeah you are fucked there's no two ways about it so when I, when I look at the situation from this, the abstract, and I, and I do apply my own, my own experiences to it, you can see that this is going to be, you have, a, you have a large queer creator bullied into committing suicide. Yeah. He plagiarized. That won't fucking matter. No. Okay. How many YouTubers fucking plagiarize? Well, let's be fair. A lot of people will read wiki articles. They read fucking articles verbatim without offering up any fucking criticism. I mean, holy fucking shit. Remember, there's, there's, there's one guy named Black Pigeon Speaks who uh, was really big in the alt-right space. He's the reason why the Jarbo cartel like meme I had up for a while was there. Um, this guy would plagiarize full-on articles in his videos and never actually admit uh, to, to them being articles. He would just present it as his own argument. Mm -hmm. right and he was called out and he's like who gives a fuck you know like that's the whole point is like everybody is on youtube is doing it to put, put out content the yeah. content the content mill machine whatever you want to call it that we have to do requires us to literally put out content every single day to have a take 
on everything, every single day, for the most part, if shit's breaking, you got to dive into it. You got to figure it out. And you know what? You may not always dot your I's or cross your T's and you might grab something and you might pull from it and not give proper credit credit or whatever, right? This happens all the time. These people aren't actually journalists. These people haven't gone to fucking journalism school and gotten their degrees. They're just commentators on the fucking internet. It really isn't that big of a fucking deal. Essentially, if you've got, if you, if you showcase yourself as a journalist and you showcase yourself as this sort of thing, then it's, it, yeah, ethics is a big deal. The, the, all that shit. If you're a smaller ass creator, it doesn't really fucking matter. All right. It doesn't really fucking matter. But Summerton, Summerton was in my personal opinion, he was the target of that video. I said him and Illuminati, but mostly Summerton. And that had a lot to do in my opinion with what H uh, H bomber guy is into there's like, is it curiosity stream? Is that the one he's into? Is that, the, uh, let me double check this here. Um, let's see, is it curie? Uh, what is he, what is he, um, um, let me take a look here. Uh, okay. What, what is it? I, I'm just, I'm trying to figure this thing out here. Cause I want to make sure mm -hmm. that I have the right info. Cause he, he was working on a, there's a, there's a, a program he's working on or something, um, like a, a side thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to see if I know what it is. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it is. And, uh, I don't want to speak out of turn on that one basically. Right. So there's that. Um, but anyway, uh, he's in, he's involved in something like, like a curiosity stream sort of thing where it's a bunch of YouTubers, like bread tubers that have their own like subscription based service. Mm -hmm. I just don't know what it's called. Okay. Anyway, um, so, you know, what, what we have here is, is I, from what I had read, uh, Summerton wanted in on that, that prop on that, on that bit, right. He wanted in on that program because he did video essays. They all do video essays. They're all left bread tube YouTubers, right? So he wanted in on that and they did not want him in. So like my interpretation is that they nuked him from orbit destroying any chance of him joining into their ranks. That's my interpretation of it. And I think that's a pretty fair interpretation of it. And so, cause I haven't seen any counter evidence to support. Otherwise, like th they want to protect what's theirs. They don't want outsiders coming in, especially outsiders that are as controversial as someone like James Summerton is. And so they, they come out with this plagiarism and you video that fucking tackles these main people and what do you think the int the intent of that is what exactly is call out culture on youtube right it's to have consequences yeah it is it is you know if you know you bring awareness uh -huh. is is bringing awareness to it again is like it's largely ridiculous it's just it's like who the fuck are you to say anything about anybody i say the same thing about me right like i might criticize like the fandom menace people, they have the right to have their opinion. I've always said that. I just wish they had a more informed opinion and didn't mislead their audience because when they openly admit to it being a grift, being a game that they use on their audience, that's what I have the biggest trouble with because their audience believes them. Their audience listens to them. They're influenced by them. And the same thing applies to bread tube. The same thing applies to all of these different cult of personalities. Yeah. And that's the biggest problem. So again, if Summerton is dead, and I hope not, I, I really hope not, you will see a reckoning on the commentary YouTube community, on the call out community, unlike anything else. Because if you've got a popular, formerly popular queer creator having taken his own life due to bullying from this kind of shit, Oh man, Susan Wojcicki ain't there to fucking protect this shit no more. You know, 
Right. That's great. That would be, wow. It's, yeah, Nebula. That's what it is. Thank you. It's Nebula. Thank you, Foul. Uh, let's see. Command unit here says there's a reason YouTube banned reply videos. It wasn't that YouTube. Thank you, by the way, for that command unit. It wasn't that YouTube necessarily banned. They didn't ban reply videos. They, they de incentivized them. So what it was is they used to have the, do you know about this Caden back in 2013? They had like up until 2014, I think, or 2013, they had it was like short, like videos, right? Well, you, I mean, it could be how, whatever link, but yeah, you could, right. you could do a video response to somebody else and that create you could submit it and then that creator would then post it and then people would watch it and then people could come underneath it and they'd be able to watch approved response videos mm -hmm. this is awesome fucking tool we all want it back it's that, it's uh, like an awesome concept but it is time. it is but you know sorry it's it is a cool concept and I think one of the biggest problems with it, though, is that like, again, they got rid of it because what you had were reply girls, you mm -hmm. know, the buxom young lasses that would, yeah. that would respond to like anything. Philip DeFranco says like, Tee -hee -hee -hee, you have a laughing monkey <laughs> right. and that's it. That's what they'd want. And so it ended up being, that's why they got rid of it, you know, but why it's did, like, but also to but, get rid of, <sighs> um, spam well true but then do you know what happened with with reaction content reaction content got de-incentivized as well and reaction content got that way because of grade a under a calling out people like tyrone magnus mm. and people who just sit there and they react to something without ever saying anything and that's difficult to do sometimes because if you're reacting to something live and you don't know the point that someone's trying to make, you want to give it maybe a little extra time so they can emphasize that point. So you like, that's how I do it at least. Right? Like I hate it. Fucking despise it. When I'm listening to somebody react to something and they pause every two fucking seconds mm -hmm. to respond to it. So then they're like, they're actively fucking well within the transformative use like you, the transformative works in regards to like you making a point but you also need to emphasize that point in order to make that point so it's it's fine you know what i mean like there's no there's no fucking rule or or limit on on how much of something you can use if it's if it's meant to emphasize a point if the whole thing is meant to be responded to then you know you could largely get away with it movies are a little bit different mostly mostly because of music is a big factor because the music is licensed to that one property it's not meant for yeah. redistribution uh video games are also the same way on that front but I, i'm getting ahead of myself here largely what i'm talking about though is is the way youtube operates is like that one video from grade a under a wiped out tyrone magnus it wiped him the fuck out i don't feel bad because tyrone magnus sucks so, and all he's done recently is just push more homophobic, transphobic nonsense, mm -hmm. right? It's like, I don't want to watch uh, Eternals. I don't want to see two dudes kiss. There's a peck on the lips. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you're not, you're not watching. Are you, you that, know, that much of a bitch? Like, yeah. Like, like you're not watching one of those guys, like bend the other one over fucking spread right. his cheeks and just fucking go to goddamn fucking flavor town. <laughs> you're not watching any of that happening. Right. You know, it's, 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 it's that's not the, like that's the, the craziest thing. Like that they act like that's what's happening. Like, Oh my God, this is like, no, that's like, you're not watching any of that. Like, Oh my God. No, it's, it, that's the whole point is that it's, is that they don't, they don't care. They just want to play a certain game. They just want to, they just want to go, they oh, play I, this role. I don't, I don't like the gay people. I don't like the trans people. I'm like, they can't fucking hurt you, man. They can't fucking hurt <laughs> you. They're not the boogeyman. Are you kidding me? Dude, gay people fucking awesome. All right. You ever like got into a fucking con, like a con, a con, uh, conversation with gay people about dance music? Uh, I've had gay people. I told, I, uh, I was working this uh, temp job in LA on Sunset Boulevard at an accounting firm. And there's these two very, very flamboyantly gay guys that were there with us. Great dudes, by the way. Fucking, they were fun as hell to talk to. And uh, we're talking about concerts. And I was all like, yeah, man, back in 07, I went and saw Spice Girls. And then my buddy dragged me to go see Kylie Minogue twice. And uh, they, one who looks at me and he goes like, oh, sweetie, you're gayer than we are. <laughs> and then I'm just like, you wish. You know? And what? it's like, fucking dude, like, 
gay people are awesome. Like they're just people. Well, let me just I, let me uh, clarify that they're just people. That's my it. My boss a year ago at this event that was helping my um, that my uh, for my aunt's and dad's work was gay, and then I was like, honestly, the workflow was way better. Honestly, like gay people workflow is better than straight people. I'm sorry. I, I've never, true. I've never been in a situation where I, I, I can speak to that. But sure, I guess. Because I don't know. Like, there's a, uh, a, like a, you know, like a hurry. And like with, I feel like with straight people, there's not ever a hurry. Like it's yeah. like okay, we can do this and this and this. Well, gay people are like okay, let's like we need to get this done. Like we need to get these th- people through and out. While straight people, they're like, okay, yeah, we can sit around, wait a couple minutes, and do this if we need to. Well, wait a minute here. Hold on. Is is Movie Bob retiring? Who that? <laughs> oh, oh, I don't even have fucking time for that right now, man. Okay. That's that's for another that's the, fucking the... day. That's for that's for another fucking day. Um. You know, uh, it's yeah. Movie Bob is movie. Bob is like DSP of movie. No, he's not. That's actually really not like anything. That's, 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 that's not fair to DSP. (laughs) I really don't like fucking, uh, I really don't like movie Bob. But anyway, I mean, you know, um, uh, God damn. I just saw that. Okay. But yeah, um, I just feel my personal take is I just feel that if you know, YouTube is a goddamn shithole, right? Yeah. Most of the time. Um, and it's not that I add much. I, I like to think I'm more centered and more measured, but at the same time, I, you know, this is like a three and a half hour stream to like 30 people, by the way. Thank you guys. I, I really appreciate you all. It's, it's just that it's like, I don't know what we can do to like, to add benefit to someone's like existence. You know what I mean? Like that's always kind of what it is the way I look at it, you know, cause what some of the content I watch, uh, is really just like low key, you know, you know what I'm watching right now with my kid. That's like awesome. I mean, awesome. There's a guy out of Indonesia. He runs, uh, it's, uh, his channel is called ants Canada. He was in Canada. Mm-hmm. Now he's in Indonesia. He built this like thousand gallon. Yeah, well, yeah, sure. He, sure. He's got, like, I think, like two million subs or some shit like that. Uh, but he built this viv- vivarium in his house, right? Uh-huh. Like this own ecosystem in his house of like local like plants and shit. And he puts, you know, bugs. Like he fucking raised this uh, huntsman spider, and like he fed her some some cockroaches, and then put a male huntsman in there with her, and she fucking they made it, and then she killed and ate the male, right? And, and that was like months ago. So he's been watching her like, you know, incubate all that stuff, puts her into the, puts the spy, the baby spiders in first, and then eventually puts her in. And then the vivarium gets opened at night and she apparently escaped and he caught her and put her back in, but now she's pregnant again. So I think it was a different huntsman spider because they're, they're active in, um, in Indonesia but this one's fucking big. Either way, the whole point, I'm not trying to try to get to myself here. It's like it, the, the way the guy does it is so fucking interesting. His editing, his, whoever his editor is, does a great job because they build tension, right? They build tension between the scenes. Like you're watching like what's going on with this fucking uh, horde of ants that are like completely murderous and like a huge issue for the ecosystem and him trying to figure out ways to deal with that. Him wanting like, you know, to mate praying mantises or, or to get like, you know, grass grasshoppers to be able to, 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 to live and to thrive. It's just, this whole thing is crazy. He puts crabs, he put fish, you know, that are in there. It, it's just, it's really cool. My six-year-old on Saturday morning comes to me cause we've been watching it together and she's like, dad, can we watch the, uh, the ant guy? And I'm all like, I gotta go to work, but we can watch it tomorrow. Mm-hmm. She's like, Oh, okay. So then Sunday rolls around and I'm like, oh, I have to get, get ready for work. And I'm like, I have a little bit of time. Do you want to watch the, uh, the ant guy? And she's like, no, that's okay. We'll watch it tomorrow. 
And I was like, okay. So we start watching it yesterday. And then she comes over to me and she's just all like, she goes, oh yeah, this is going to happen. Like they're going to find the frog because the frog got out. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, I already watched it. I'm all like, what? She's like, I already watched it. I'm like, what do you mean you already watched it? Like this is what we're watching together. She's like, yeah, well, I, I mean, I'll watch it with you, but I've already watched it. I'm like you punk, you fucking punk. Wow. I'm like what the hell, man? I waited two days. I've been waiting to find out what's going on with this fucking spider and the, in, in the vivarium opening up. Like I'm invested into this story. I've been waiting two days. What? Oh, it's, and, what's funny. It's around me of this uh, older couple on Instagram. And then they're all, like the, uh, the guy. Well, so the like she went out and like had to go grocery shopping and he couldn't wait. And he saw so, so he watched an episode, the two episodes, and when she came back, it's like, you know, like when, when it was like video on demand, you can see like how long someone watched something. Yeah. And, and she's like, she looks at it and like, he's like going to it, like acting like as if he didn't see it. And she's looking at the TV and it's like, you watched this without me? Like, and he's like, no, like, I don't know who's in this house watching these two episodes. And he's like, she's like, I went to grocery shop with my daughter, with our daughter, who we don't see that much. And you watched these two episodes without me. And and he's like, it was the, uh, the dog. The dog did it. The dog, the dog yeah, was the watching dog, it. The dog totally the dog did was it. was watching it. <laughs> yeah, bad dog, bad dog. I'm just like, yeah, what? I, what? <laughs> I was pissed at my kid for that. Like, I was legit, I was legit ticked at my kid. Uh, but she still cuddled up next to me. We watched it. Oh, so you know what it is? You know what we watched tonight, man? Um, is uh, uh, my we started watching Pokemon Concierge, which is really cute. I, I really like Pokemon Concierge. Um, but my kids wanted to watch something else Pokemon related, and so my mm -hmm. girlfriend put on uh, Mewtwo Strikes Back, you know, which is the CG remake of the first movie. Mm -hmm. And when that first came out, I didn't really care for it to be honest with you. I was like, ah, it's not as good. Cause the original, I saw it first day in the theater, right? First day for showing in the theater. I like the original movie quite a bit. Uh, I think it's great, great vibes, great fucking that opening sequence, you know, when they're playing the fucking theme song and shit and like Bulbasaur is like firing off the, you know, shooting little vines and everything. Oh, it's fucking great. Yeah. And, uh, and I, and I, and I do, I love that original movie and I like Pokemon quite a bit. Uh, I haven't got into it in years, but I still love the original stuff. I think I think once they went past 151 Pokemon, they kind of shot themselves in the foot with a lot of it. Now it's like, you know, you have like Radiator and it's just like a fucking weird Pokemon that looks like a Radiator. I don't know. <laughs> Pal, Pal World is funny because it's like totally ripping off Pokemon. Uh, but you give you give a chimpanzee an AK-47 in that game and you automatically <laughs> win, in my opinion. So uh, it's Pokemon, Planet of the Apes. No, no, you get you you can upgrade you can upgrade your skill tree to to provide your your chimpanzees, whatever they're called, I forget right now, but like you can give them AK 47s and like that's their how they defend themselves. And you can even like you can even like call them and, and like send them in the battle and shit, right? You can you can send in a monkey with an AK 47 to take on a big ass crap. It's like, okay, yeah, no, I'm down with this. This is fine. This is great. Thank you. Um, you know, you can, you can manufacture like heavy weaponry yourself and use it against other pals. Uh, it's Pokemon with guns. That's why everyone really likes it. But anyway, so we're watching, we're watching, um, the, the Poke, the, the Mewtwo strikes back, you know, and like, I remember when, when, when Ash died in the, in the movie, when I saw that back when I was a teenager, I teared up back when I was 17, right? Because Ash was fucking dead and Pikachu was just losing his shit, right? Because there's a fucking love for between Ash and Pikachu. We, we all know it. So it's like I'm watching that scene again and it's fucking hitting me right in the feels, man. I know Ash comes back to life and everything else, but just like the Pikachu like is just going ham trying to revive him you know what i mean and like he's just laying there he's stone his eyes are wide open and you're like that's fucked up for a kid's movie that's wow right it's fucked up for a kid's movie and so like i'm watching with my four-year-old and she's cuddled up on me and she's just fucking dialed into this movie right and 
it that part ends ash comes back to life somehow magically revived by the tears of pokemon I'm not going to question it but it happened and and then it we, yeah it know. happens it's you know that's that's how they revive it's just pokemon tears uh that's the elixir of life apparently and so you know Mew, mewtwo takes the clone pokemons and he's going to go somewhere and they're all leaving and all of a sudden my four-year-old just starts to cry hmm. and she's like daddy where are the pokemon going where are the pokemon what's going where are the pokemon on where the pokemon are so like they left i'm like they're okay they're fine they're okay she's like I don't know, where's the pokemon she's like fucking freaking out because these pokemon are like going off with mewtwo to, to you know to go to go learn how to like i don't know love and shit right and i'm just trying to like explain to her like no no no, it's okay it's okay and then she's just fucking bawling her eyes off like the rest of the movie so then i go i'm like okay do you want to watch more pokemon she's like i want to watch more pokemon so i went back over and i found indigo league they got all 52 episodes on there the mm -hmm. original show which that's to me like that's the goat that's what i like to if i'm going to go watch pokemon i'm going to watch the original show all right? all right like i just think that's the best version of it and uh, so i started playing that for them and then and then you know, my, we're watching it and, uh, both my kids are really liking it. My, my six year old keeps asking me, she's like, who's your favorite Pokemon? And I'm all like, it's fucking Squirtle, dude. Squirtle. She's like, really? Pikachu's mine. I'm like, yeah, no, I like Squirtle. I like Squirtle or Bulbasaur quite, quite a bit. You know, mine was Oshuat and all of the, uh, that whole. But what generation is that from though? Right. That's like, I think that's. Hold on, I can't remember. Because in Pokemon, the first movie, they introduced Togepi for the first time. And then in the uh, short film, like Pokemon at the day out or whatever the fuck it is, that little like documentary thing that they did, they introduced Meryl for like the first time. So like they introduced Generation Pokemon. five. Yeah, see, I don't fucking, I don't know the new generation. Like, I know up to Mewtwo and like vaguely beyond that. Yeah, I don't know what is a sea otter. Oh, okay. It's cute. Really cute. But I will say the the one that I really like the I really, really like. I've always loved Psyduck. Oh my god. Psyduck is good too. Psyduck is great. He's just always like, ah, fucking just I I, I kind of think like Psyduck, if I had to uh, equate him to a person, like Mad Max is kind of like Psyduck. <laughs> it's, it's just if you think about it, if you, the manic energy, true. the manic energy is there um but no really it's it's i think no because like psyduck pops up in pokemon concierge um yeah. and then like he's in you know he's in fucking uh the 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 movie and everything like he's in he's in you know uh detective pikachu um like psyduck is fucking dope and the thing i'm yeah. watching this shit with my with my kids and i'm kind of remembering like when i was watching the show back in the 90s you know i, I was a teenager but i was watching it every week you know like I can, I can still know the fucking theme song. Yes, I still fucking get jacked up thinking about the theme song. You know, that's one of the best theme songs of all time. Is is Pokemon? Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the key reasons why why it works. Because it starts yeah. off like I want to be the very best, da -da, like no, like and you know, and and you get into it, and you're like, yeah, fuck yeah, fuck, I want to fucking go catch Pokemon and shit. I want to, I want to go into these. And I love it. I'm watching the first episode, and like, and like Ash Ashley tells uh Pidgey. It's all like, enjoy your last moments of freedom before you're mine. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm all like, yo, Peter's going to be down your ass, bitch. Fucking stop that shit right now. Fucking don't do it. Yeah. You know, and it's just, it's so funny how much of Pokemon is actually just like animal abuse. It's fucking, it's fucking <laughs> cockfighting. Pokemon is, is cockfighting. It really is. Okay. It's like, I love oh Pokemon. So I'm going to capture them and then train them to fight other Pokemon. I'm going to. Wow. So Psyduck is Tweak from South Park. You know what, Shifty? I think that's a that's a that's you know what? I can see it. I can see it. Okay, so you, we had Wobble Buff, um, and then who? What was the other one that was a Team Rocket? Meowth. Meowth. Yeah. I was like, I can't remember like the exact name, but I remembered like the image. Well, I mean, Meowth is, is, um, you know, obviously the other, the other part of that, uh, yeah. Team Rocket and shit. That was the other thing too that bothered me is like during the, the new, like Mewtwo Strikes Back, the, the, the voice of Meowth is just like different, you know, you're like, no, nah. like you sound close, but no cigar. Just, it's, 
Meowth it's a little was, bit. was a snarky little thing. Oh, he was great. Meowth is awesome. Amazing. I love Meowth. Because he even he was like, even though he was a shit heel, he oh was kind God, of like such... he was just like, like but he's shit. fun. He's like a fun shit heel. He's like, you know, it's like that saying from Hot Tub Time Machine about Rob Cordry. Well, he's an asshole, you know, and he's our asshole. Sort of thing. Right. And you know, but I know I love Meowth. And even like, you know, look at like fucking Team Rocket, right? Um, just Jesse and James, and you're just laughing your ass off at the shit that they do because it's like so fucking stupid. Right. But so then like stupid. I but again, like you have I, I love Brock. I stopped watching the original show once Brock left. I didn't like the new one they added in. What was it? What was his name? It was um but they the changed. journalist. Yeah, they the uh Brock left the show, like the character left, went uh -huh. off his own way to go fuck every nurse joy out there. Cause you know that's what he's doing. Oh yeah. He's absolutely having sex with every single nurse joy. Um so and then they introduced someone else. Damn. Well, it was a journalist. Mm. Uh, it was a journalist. Is uh, I forget the. Uh, uh, I forget. So you had Jesse and James, and then you, and then there was a new one, new person that took over for James. Uh, Tracy. It was Tracy. Tracy Sketch it. It was a yeah. Yeah, that's what oh. it was they got rid of they got rid of her or they got rid of they they, they got rid of uh of uh of that and it's kind of kind of crappy i wasn't happy about that to be honest with you oh my like, god i'm just like going down the road lane through like pokemon and just like wow i can't believe like because i think yeah i don't think i watched like i watched a lot of pokemon but mostly was like Bakugan and Beyblades. Was like Beyblade? Bigger. Beyblade. Lame. Beyblades were the shit, man. For me at least. Like and like I remember I had this one that I, Oh my god, I what's funny is like I had every single one of these. Oh my god. And like and then Bakugans were were also pretty cool. Um, oh my god, yeah, Pokemon, Bakugan, and Beyblades were the three. Well, the crazy. No, things. was it? Um, I'm looking up here because Jess says that uh, oh. Brock left after the fourth season, and then Misty left after the second season. No, Misty Misty left in like 2002. That was like in their fourth season or whatever. I think you're thinking of. I think you got them mixed up. Uh, um, let me see. I'm just. I didn't really pay attention much to Yu-Gi-Oh. I never got into Yu-Gi-Oh. I was just like, okay, like. Uh. Yeah, he. Let's see here. Uh, in the Pokemon anime, Brock leaves Ash's group to attend medical school at the end of Diamond and Pearl. Uh, Chanel League Victor Victor season. Brock has been Ash's constant companion since 1999 when he first appears. So yeah, he left. Yeah, Brock left first. And then, um, um, you know, uh, let's see. During his time, Brock was replaced by Tracy due to fears of the localization team that Brock might be perceived as a racist caricature by American audiences. That's, that's why they wrote him what? out of the show, according to Game Rand. Oh. Like, but, but Brock, I always thought, like, if anything, Brock was just a fucking dirty ass pervert, man. Well, apparently he comes back. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me if he comes back and shit. Because, like, he was a big fan. People loved Brock. He came you back know, in, 20, in, like, November of 2017. Yeah, I need to sit there and, like, you know, with the kids. With 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 the kids is, is how I'm going to argue it. Is watch the watch the rest of the fucking show. You know, watch, I'll watch all that shit. Be like, uh, yeah. Just, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I finally, I I finally saw Ashes. One seasons. <laughs> There's a lot of seasons. It's like my girlfriend was asking me. She's like, well, what? Like, we watch a lot of Bob's Burgers over dinner. Um, mm -hmm. because it's just easy and we just like it. And then she's like, well, what should what we do? Fuck? Like, should we watch something different? And I'm all like, well, we could start the Simpsons. You know, the kids are kind of old enough. What to watch is the this new design of Ash? Uh, not great. What the fuck is this? Hold on here. Yeah. Rational for five. Thank you, buddy. 
Um, oh all terrible. three usual suspects, such as Brianna Wu and Rebecca Watson, are coming in defense of H Bomber Guy. After yeah, of course they are. Of course they are because they understand. They also thrive in call out culture, so they absolutely understand what's going to happen. Um, if uh, if it goes their way, especially fucking Rebecca Watson, man. But again, look, here's the Brianna Wu and Rebecca Watson are like the old guards of like old feminism online. It's it's gone beyond them. Like Brianna Wu is hated by a lot of people on the left because she's fucking moon rock crazy. And Rebecca Watson hasn't been relevant. Fuck, dude. Years. I mean, look, even like Lindsay Ellis, who was has been way more relevant than like both of them opted to get the fuck out and and everything you know opted to just get the fuck out um she just had a kid by the way so good for her you know i and i'm not saying i'm not saying i'm a big lindsey ellis fan because i'm not but um she also kind of yeeted herself out of there too jesse says we need a pokemon talk night i mean i'd have to watch a lot of pokemon again uh i was even i was having trouble remembering the names of some of the pokemon tonight i'm like which one is that one you know because there's so fucking many yeah oh wait no oh yeah um i was just like trying to remember because there's the other the other show that i was really into was ninjago and i'm trying to like i think the one saw that it was good it was i mean for a kid show um like i i think the first only five to six seasons I watched and I just not realized that they continued and but like we had to redesign or whatever um, which is stupid but yeah. there's well, a lot of craziness with that show that was pretty cool like pretty good storylines yeah I mean like there's a lot of good shows out there that you can yeah you can watch and check out and I mean there's like good stuff from a, like you know you find like yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's like there's just so much content coming out that sometimes it's hard to go back to older shit. But it's like one of the reasons why we watch Bob's Burgers is just because I'm it's I can put on any random episode and be entertained. And it's just yeah. like we watch it over dinner and we just like it's just easy. You know, it's, it's so not, funny. It's not, I just it's, my, I think I wrote, honestly my favorite episode is the cannibal episode. Um wait, Bob's Burgers? Yeah. The which the one? The whole, cannibal? The cannibal episode when uh when um when they're on the island no when so uh her like ex-boyfriend comes and is like a uh like an fda or cd like you know like a uh, oh 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 uh fucking hugo yeah yeah and, like, he's and he, yeah there's like and the kids are fucking around and talking about human parts being part of the burgers and he goes off and is like oh thinking like like that it's true and everything well that was the first episode that was the first episode? The first episode is the beware uh, uh, contains human meat or contains human remains or something. I know that because when I was at Comic-Con in 2010, was like, that was that's the first episode. Season. No, first episode. Damn, first episode sorry. was a contains human meat. Yeah, or human remains. Okay. Because Louise went to freaking show and tell and told everybody that like her dad gets gets meat from the crematorium next door so right yeah like, there yeah. were jokes in the first couple seasons that they would not do now like they really like i think when um when um I the to, uh I the, to go the, back and... oh dude i watch it all the time man dude yeah. fucking the best the best episode of that show hands down is the water balloon fight episode that is like that's a season finale where they all want to go like all the townsfolk uh mr fish is going to raise the rent so they all want to go and do like a solidarity strike and he decides to uh, trick them into breaking their strike by having a water balloon contest last man standing like doesn't have to pay rent and so it's like everybody in town all the business owners start fighting each other with water balloons it gets fucking crazy it's so good there's there's it's episodes with the... like 13 years of this show yeah i've watched every episode i can't even tell you how many times i've watched it I've watched it more than I've watched um, Simpsons in like years. You know, it's fucking, um, it's 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 crazy how good the show is. And then this season too, like, the, if you could find if you could find 
the season or find the episode um where god which one is it it's uh there's so many good character driven episodes too right like there's one where all three kids have different events mm -hmm. and the same night um uh yeah like gene like, what is it like tina is doing a play louise is reciting a poem and gene is i think doing a um like a stage show at school or some shit uh no no they're doing they're putting on a concert for christmas and like bob and linda have to figure out which one to go to because like one one child is going to be left out and it becomes this massive thing but it's a really sweet episode like it's just a really really sweet episode <laughs> anyway uh i do gotta go it's after one o'clock in the morning oh my god yeah the dirtiest joke they ever did was that Tori Amos bit. Oh yeah, a fucking oil spill. The oil spill episode. Oil spill, my oil spill. Oh god, you're right. This really is about sex. Um, <laughs> it's uh no, it's great. That's a good. That's from oh season. God. I think that's from season two as well. It's with Randy, the videographer, or the documentary. What's funny is, is H, uh, it, John does a uh, with Retta has a uh pigeon commercial and it's effing hilarious i'll have to check that. yeah go ahead and send that one off to me because I, I have to go in yeah. a minute but yeah. i'll have to check that one out the um uh no there's so many good episodes of that show it's, it's like literally there's no bad episode or like there's no bad season some episodes i like to watch more than others just depending on the story like you know they have like midnight tina i think is what it is or it's basically like tina is a uh she's going to become like a, a hall she's a hall monitor but she's going to be promoted to hall manatee which is like the highest order of the hall monitors but she uh zeke ends up getting in trouble and she has to take uh zeke to the principal's office and if he gets busted like he'll be kicked out of school basically um and so he has to run because he's trying to like get the school the the uh, the flag the the wagstaff whalers the whaler costume the mascot because his grandmother's going in for surgery and tina doesn't believe him at first but eventually she does there's this great scene when they're locked together they're handcuffed together by using a chinese finger trap mm -hmm. that's what she uses to keep them together and they're walking outside and they see miss lavon's and she's outside smoking and they're like oh no miss lavon's can't see us and zeke's like okay i got this and he walks over he's like hey miss lavon's is here smoking a cigarette huh oh man cigarettes look cool it's almost like you're smoking almost like i'm smoking through you <laughs> and she's like no get out of here zeke ah <laughs> just like fucking just fucks with her gets her to leave such a good show man such a good show oh my god yes yeah, so, so uh the two there's two commercials uh that are 30 seconds from progressive that has retta and uh john is john playing two pigeons and they're like two quick hilarious things that i'm just like okay this is funny um it's it, it's mostly about the pigeons but the progressive things at the backdrop but it's hilarious i think i've seen the i think i've seen the pigeon yeah. one. it was pretty good but uh yeah guys it's four hours it's 110 i gotta be up at seven so i'm gonna go uh thank you kaden for popping on and hanging out i appreciate it and watching all my old fucking shitty ass college movies <laughs> um and anyway thank you the, the people who watched if you haven't already please leave a like uh if not i don't care uh thank you for all the financial support for all of you out there that think i should fucking die on a fire uh my audience supports me so <laughs> i'm not going nowhere uh i don't know if i'll be on tomorrow night i do need to watch batman under the red hood and i've got that appointment in the afternoon i got to do a bunch of other shit so i may not but i do want to watch it i do want to talk about it for patio commentary so i need to get back into that game all right, everybody, have yourself a great night. Thank you again for popping on in, and peace the fuck out.